Hey, Action Shelf listeners, before we jump into the show itself, we want to tell you about how you can get even more action in your life. Mm. <laughs> that appeals to more you. Action, more action, you more say, More action, John. you say, yes. If you go over to our Podbean patron page, that's patron.podbean.com slash punchup, you can listen to Lisman and I watch, what's this? Good action movies. Good action movies, you say? That's right, a change of pace. We thought behind the paywall, let's give people something of quality. So And give us something of quality. I know, it's such know? a pleasure to do that. So twice a month, you and I will be doing commentary tracks that you can download for uh, yes. good action movies, all kinds of awesome mm. stuff from a lot of our heroes like John Woo. And uh, we've done stuff from the John Wick franchise and Sylvester Stallone, mm-hmm. Arnold Schwarzenegger, all the guys we never get to talk about on here. Yeah, so you, stuff we legitimately love and uh, love to share with with you you all. Um, yeah, yeah. So you can listen to that uh, as as well as other cool exclusive content from the Punch Up Entertainment Network shows. Uh, once again, the address for that is patron.podbean.com/slash/punchup. And now into the action. The action show. Welcome to the Action Shelf, the podcast celebrates the glory of B action movies. I'm John Campbell. I'm Michael Lisman. Oh, Lisman, we've done it. We've made it to another year. It is 2023, and yeah. here we are to kick off. Starting out the year with a bang. Dude. Several, actually. Oh, a lot. <laughs> I gotta say, man, oh, this is one of the most Action Shelf, Action Shelf movies we've ever <laughs> done, right? This is... yeah. Uh, we, we're doing an entire month devoted to the films of the WWE Studios, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. which, you know, hey man, they make movies. There's, they do. There's more movies than you'd than you'd expect. There's more movies you'd expect, but we are watching. Uh, I believe all of these came out in theaters. The ones we're watching. So we are watching specifically the pocket when they still thought there was box office potential on these. Because for the last probably I don't know ten years maybe ish. They've all been straight to video. Like th- yeah. they very quickly saw the audience on these is limited. So they are still making those. Is oh that yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, We've watched okay. that movie uh, that Dean came with Vendetta, which was not super recent, but was somewhat recent. That was a WWE movie. Oh, that's they true. They still yeah. make them, man. Yeah. yeah, they still make them. Uh, it's because uh, they still. But now they now you don't hear about. Them, <laughs> I guess yeah. is what I would say. Uh, yeah. let's see. When was the last? Uh, what did they put out? Yeah, they've got. Uh, they put out an animated movie last year called Rumble. That sounds awful. Uh, yeah, it's about uh, cartoon monsters wrestling. See, because it's WWE, okay. right? Right. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> I, bad. Bad animation is some of the worst. It that yeah. is one of the hardest things to watch. Oh I Jesus like. Christ! Yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. WWE Studios. They started in 2002. Their first mm-hmm. film was The Scorpion King. That makes a lot of sense. A movie I saw in the theater. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they well, also because because we love the Mummy, you know. Yeah. Oh, I was all in, man. I bought that hype about the Mummy shared universe, man. I went to all the Mummy <laughs> movies in the theater. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, this is within the first f- five or six. I think this is the sixth film they produced. Mm-hmm. Uh, is is 2006's The Marine? John Cena is the Marine. Now, listen, uh, uh, we watched this movie. We've both seen this movie. I, I- I've at least seen it all together in pieces if not all the way through in one sitting before this i can't mm-hmm. remember. i can't remember because this movie the we mentioned this a little bit last week 
We mm-hmm. were obsessed with the trailer for this movie. We used to watch this yeah. trailer all because the, the trailer. And I did watch the trailer again before I watched the movie. The trailer is hilarious, and I will say, kind of <laughs> just watch the tra- the trailer. Kind of gives you what the movie is. I will say that's true. Because it, it it uh, <laughs> something I did not remember is this movie does sag in the middle quite a bit. Oh yeah, oh hugely yes. so. Now, when yeah. it, when this movie is silly, it's very silly and very fun. But yes. when it's not actively blowing things up, it's kind of a tough sit. It's a tough sit, and they do a lot. I've I've seen this movie. I don't remember there being any comedy attempts. You know, oh, but Jesus all of the Christ. villains, for some reason, Jesus. are like doing comedy shtick. There is and so much. None shtick. of it works. There is. So much shtick in this movie. Yes. Um, so uh, uh, I will ask right up front here, how much do you think this movie costs? Because I think this is Ooh. fascinating. Now, this is co-produced or at least released by 20th Century Fox, primarily right, made by right. the WWE. But this is this is technically a studio movie, which we don't often right. do. Right. And this is 2006. 2006. I'm going to say $7 million. Ooh, Wow. 15 15 million <laughs> and it grossed 22 so so technically a success technically um now here's my second question for you to guess on this is not the only marine movie oh god how many marine oh. movies has the WWE made i know there's at least 4 it's more yeah it's more i was going to yeah. say it's more than than one might think yeah <laughs> I'm gonna say it cost. So the first one cost fifteen million dollars. I'm gonna say they made fifteen <laughs> movies. <laughs> That'd be a lot. They made six. There are six of these six. in total. This That's spawned so many. five sequels. <laughs> now none of the other ones came out in theaters. And how many of them have John Cena in? Them? Uh, not only this one has John Cena. Okay, in, of I, f- I figured as much. Now the, the the basically they keep the Marine idea and they just keep putting a different wrestler in each one it's sort of like each wrestler they want to put in a movie they'll make a marine movie with that person gotcha okay gotcha so gotcha. so is it can... always the same plot or i guess i guess there's no i don't no. think so i think it's i think it's all just you know we, we may have to watch some more marine movies on here. i think so uh, yeah yeah no i think i, I think plot, i think but, i think know. the plot is just basically there's a marine in each of them um yeah. you've got the marine the marine 2 the marine 3 home front uh marine 4 moving target marine 5 battleground and marine 6 close quarters yeah 2018 wow. the last marine movie came out which oh is oh my god yeah these went further than you it's really Yeesh. it's yeah man uh so yeah uh th- oh god the marine oh boy okay well so this Yeesh. this one okay. is a vehicle for john cena this was seen as the big sort of dwayne johnson which we'll, who we'll talk about next week uh you know at that time the rock uh he you know he was the breakout of the wwe and so then i he think was starting to get some success outside of wwe and so i think point. their thing is like we can just keep doing this Yes. Because uh, they yes. also made The Rundown, which I think is probably the best movie WWE has made. The Rundown yes, is pretty absolutely. good. Is that the... I'm trying to remember which one has Christopher Walken in it. That's The Rundown. That's The Rundown. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. That's where The Rock goes to South America to, to yes. get Sean William Scott. and it's, it's yes. That one's pretty good. I remember really liking that yeah, movie. Yeah, that one's a lot. It. That one's a lot of fun. That one is legitimately funny, unlike this, which yes. is... Jesus Christ. I mean, really, Jeez. man. I, I will tell you, yeah. What really hurt this movie are its comedy attempts. Um, uh, yeah. Yes. Because yes. the, the action is very silly. Um, mm-hmm. But I, we, we've talked about this before. When you're doing silly action, it often helps to play the movie very straight otherwise. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and not, I mean, not not just is it trying to be funny. It is goofy as fuck in places. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Now, this comes to us from director John Bonito, whose mm-hmm. career is primarily just directing WWE events. Mm-hmm. Or he made a movie in two, he made one other movie in 2011 called Carjacked with Stephen Dorff. So, 
That tells you a lot. Uh, yeah, sure does. Steven Dorff, who's not a bad actor, but has definitely not always chosen good projects. Um, mm. Now, this, this comes to us from Alan B. McElroy, is the writer of this movie. Yeah. Um, who, who has worked on a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Like uh, a lot. Like a lot of stuff. He wrote his first screenplay credit was Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, which I will say falls on the good side of the Halloween movies. Mm. Uh, it's one of the better ones. Mm-hmm. He also worked on an episode I really do want to do, uh, or worked on a movie I really do want an episode about, which is the Brandon Lee film Rapid Fire. Oh, yeah, yeah. We haven't done a Brandon I Lee have not film seen yet. That. Um, and then kind of fell in this. Now, he. Did, <laughs> this is a movie we. Did, are not doing next month for video game month but talked about it. he did write the tekken movie Ooh, god yeah, yeah. oh no <laughs> we're not we're not doing tekken next Yeesh. month but i think if we do another video game month tekken that's we'll find probably it. he also yeah. worked on a movie that's oh man that i that i've like debate doing on this show because it costs too much mm-hmm. but it's a total uh action show movie and that's ballistic x versus sever what the fuck is that? Why does that sound familiar? It's a movie I definitely saw in the theater. Uh, <laughs> it's Antonio Banderas and Lucy Liu as assassins fighting each other. Oh, I do remember that coming out. The yes. movie is called Ballistic colon X versus Sever. It's a bad name. It's a bad name, and it's a bad movie. But I yeah. this was I was thirteen, and I was like, oh my god, yes. <laughs> It's ballistic X versus Sever, and it's not the letter X. No, it's E C K S, and I believe that's Antonio Banderas's X. Yeah, he, I believe he so. plays FBI agent Jeremiah X. <laughs> <laughs> and I was there opening weekend to see this we, thing. We probably should. You know what? I, that know, one might we, be. We might allow that because I do. It's like a seventy million dollar movie, but it's it is a total action shell film. We'll just give ourselves a little treat there. You know what I mean? Well, I don't know we'll how much put of a, it. I don't know. I have not seen it since I was thirteen. I don't know how much of a treat it is. Fair enough. But we should put it after what we expect to be the most atrocious. Ah, uh, there you go. We do film. like we do like a bronzy and then X versus Sever. Exactly. Uh, so, <laughs> or a Seagal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the we do have a Seagal coming up. Um yeah. let's, oh, don't let's, tell me that, John. let's dive into this movie because I do want to talk about right off the start, this movie is stupid. With these titles, these slick digital metal titles. Yeah, I think that came with like a digital uh like video editing. I think we might have used these purchased. titles in something in high school. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we did I, these kind of for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does have that. And then it, to top it all off, when it's just John Cena in his marine dress uniform saluting. In case you didn't get that he's the marine. No. Um yeah, cuz it starts just on his face, right? And then yeah. it, it it, it pulls out and so, he's in the full hat and you know uniform that you've so, seen. So Maggie, when she first looked up from her phone, it was the whole screen was John Cena's face. Yeah, and she she screamed. <laughs> now I will say, you know, we like Cena. Uh, I yes, absolutely. We like Cena. I'm a big fan of this guy's. Uh, yeah, I think he's uh, a, a super likable guy and a good actor. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he's, he keeps choosing interesting projects. This mm-hmm. is before that. This is very much him in the uh, WWE wants you to do this movie. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, now I will say, like, uh, right? Uh, this movie was originally developed for a different WWE wrestler. Oh, hmm. I don't know that many wrestlers, but let's say oh, you know the him. Undertaker. <laughs> oh, oh that Hogan? A, no, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, who boy, man! This movie's not great, but this movie would have been horrible with him. So much worse. With, yeah, Cena is so much more likable. Like just yes. in general, Cena just looks like a movie star. More, you know, what I mean, like he's got yes. more of a leading man quality. Mm-hmm. Stone Cold is so rough. <laughs> like he's just, and and even in this piece of shit, I feel like Cena 
does have a level of charisma to yeah. his performance, even I, though he's given nothing to do. I, I will uh, say the one thing I will say in Vince McMahon's favor, and I won't say much because he's a huge piece of shit. If you know yeah. anything about Vince McMahon on the WWE, um, he, at least early on, he was pretty good about knowing which wrestlers could make this jump because recognizing yes. the rock, recognizing Cena, they did have something that we've seen so many other wrestlers <laughs> I mean, this is about it, right? For WWE yeah. wrestlers who are worth talking about. Batista mm -hmm. never really had... I mean, he, he was a wrestler, but never got to those heights. He really has become mm -hmm. an actor primarily. Yes. Uh, and he's a great actor. But I do feel like Cena and The Rock were like, oh, yeah, you know, these guys are like leading men. Mm -hmm. They can actually yeah. carry movies. Uh, I do remember watching this in high school and thinking i don't know if c they're really trying to make cena the next rock you know yeah uh and i wasn't convinced by this movie that that was going to happen well because this movie's terrible it's a vehicle yeah. that doesn't show him off very well and it's something he's acknowledged yeah. is sort of he feels like he's gotten his second shot the other thing yes. this movie doesn't in any way indicate that is so key is he's really fucking funny he yes is really funny john yes, cena he's hilarious he's so fucking funny i mean funny. i i think honestly his performance as peacemaker in the dc films <laughs> has made a character i never cared about one of my favorite characters at dc like i care more yes. about peacemaker than some big tier than like the yeah. flash at this yeah. point i well. love peace well yeah for obvious reasons now what's interesting <laughs> is the villain in this movie robert patrick plays peacemaker's father now oh oh yeah. that is interesting yeah yeah oh cool and they're great their scenes yeah. well, are emotionally impactful in that yeah. show and i will yes. say this is another prime example of boy patrick's trying to make this movie work isn't he he really is trying and he's he's very very watchable in this he movie. is like, because he is because he is a good act robert patrick is he, a good actor a this is, very good actor this yes. is a terrible movie and a terrible part um yes <laughs> i'll bring this up and the movie brings us up in a very stupid way uh robert patrick did ha, did play i think one of cinema's greatest villains as the t-1000 mm -hmm. uh oh, yeah. unquestionably the nod to it in this movie i did not need no <laughs> good not subtle Lord, now I talked about this was originally <laughs> developed for uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. The part of uh -huh. Rome, the villain, was originally written with a different actor in mind. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. yeah. I will talk. Hmm. Uh, who do you think? Uh, let's let's just say they're shooting for the stars on this one. They're shooting for the stars. They're, they're uh, a guy who would never do this movie in a million years, even now. Uh. <laughs> Who, who I, I want to give a joke answer. Okay, um, well, who who would they first go to is the question. They I... would first... My first instinct is another Terminator uh, okay. and have it be Arnold. Okay, um, no, 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 no. More legitimate, more legitimate. Okay, okay, okay. okay. More legitimate oh, wow. actor. Okay. Uh, let's say uh, Robert De Niro. Close, Pacino. Pacino they, was my next guess. They went, they went to Pacino with this. Oh man! And he would have been so much fun, but not in a million years. I said, even now, he, I mean, maybe now. I don't. Know. I don't he's know that. I don't think stinkers. he's been in some stinkers, but I don't think he's been in WWE. You know. Yeah, De Niro's been in some. I mean, De, De Niro's Niro been might. on the show. De Niro might. Yeah. Yeah, I could. I could see yeah. that. Honestly, they went to uh, Pacino. He turned it down. Then they went to Ray Liotta. Oh, okay. okay. He said no. Then you get to Robert Patrick. Now, Ray Liotta was in the Dungeon Siege movie, if I'm not mistaken, directed by Yu Bol. I believe Uwe Bol. he was. Yeah. So he said yes to that movie, but no to this movie, which I find interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, man, not everything makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there it is in the name of the king that he makes that the next year. Oh. <laughs> now I will so say things really went downhill in that year. The year know? he the year this movie, The Marine, came out, he was in Smoke and Aces though, which is a bad ass action. I movie. really liked that movie. I, I that movie's love so much fun. Smoke and Aces, and he's really yeah. good in that. He and Ryan Reynolds are the FBI agents in that. 
Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Really, really. I mean, I love Leota. Love Pacino. Love Robert Patrick. I will say, mm -hmm. Robert Patrick, we'll, we'll be talking about next month as well. So this is going to be a lot of Patrick this year. Yes. We love him. He does. We like do. I said, he does. Man, I. but it's one of those performances where I'm going like, oh, man, you're really... You're He's really hoping real. to try to make this thing work, aren't you? Really trying to make it work. He's yeah. trying so hard. Bringing a lot of um, energy to a very underwritten character. Yes. I think he had fun. And apparently he and Cena stayed in touch enough that he now has... I mean, I'm telling you, man, because you haven't seen the Peacemaker show? I have not seen it. No. Highly, highly recommend it. But his stuff, it is legitimately, like, emotionally rot. I mean, it is oh. the best... Cena is amazing in the whole show but his scenes with mm -hmm. patrick because he's the total he's the whole reason that that guy is the way he is yeah it's yeah god that show man is some of the best superhero stuff i've ever seen mm -hmm. uh i can't recommend peacemaker enough anyway we open up in where are we afghanistan <laughs> at the beginning of this movie i mean it's 2006 every movie uh at least has some uh representation now, of I being in the middle east i wa well and here's an interesting thing that i got from the AW trivia this movie was actually shot two years before it came out this thing sat oh. on a shelf for two years i don't know why exactly um because hmm. it i mean was it worse at some point <laughs> i don't know but uh could, could it be yeah i don't know um but so that was actually shot in 2004 um but uh so uh it starts with him in afghanistan i had i had to look this up because this movie made me uh ask a lot of questions about marines what do uh -huh. marines do what are marines and mm. the, i mean marines are a branch of the military we know this right yeah uh, uh and the whole idea basically is marines operate in both land and sea yes. army is land navy is sea marines are both Mm -hmm. But the way this movie talks about Marines is Marine is a very broad, it's a big full branch, right? Yes. They don't get into specifically what this guy's deal is, but this guy's not just a Marine, right? He's some kind of special ops. Yes. Because like, look, I, okay, I, I, I'm going to stop these emails right here. I have nothing but respect for anyone in, in, in the Marines itself. However, just being a Marine does not make you an uber powerful killing machine. You know what I mean? Like yes. there's lots of people yeah. who are, who are just officers in the Marines, stuff like that. The right. way they talk about this guy and the way they use Marines though, I'm going like, shouldn't this guy be like a Navy seal or some sort of, cause they keep talking about that's a Marine, like an elite right. sort of yeah. thing. I think that's the thing that got yeah. me was they never dig deeper than, and there are special ops within the Marines, which he's gotta mm -hmm. be, but the movie is so, this is holy shit! Is this a divorce it's, dad movie? Oh, so much. I mean, I think all yes. these WWE movies are. Yes, yeah, they know their demographic. They know their demographic, and there is something. And I know a lot of nerds and comic book fans and things like that who love the WWE. But there is a strong, and I think this is from corporate of the WWE. There is a real Americana conservative uh, mm -hmm. skewing. I don't think that, yeah. I don't know that, you know, uh, aspect. And so I do think the whole idea about like, yeah, the Marines kind of aspect yeah, of this movie. Yeah. You know, I mean, there is sort of a thing where it's like American Marines, man, America. Yeah. Kind of thing to it. It's a shorthand for he's badass. Yeah. It's just like, because there's so many times where they go like, who is this guy? He's a Marine. You know, it's, it's like, oh, okay. But like, who is he? Yeah. Oh, the, by the way, I love that his name is John Triton. Uh, which is amazing. And the amount of times he gets on, when he gets on the police radio, he just goes, this is John Triton. I'm like, yeah, who is that? <laughs> I don't think, I don't think police dispatch responds to, yeah, this is some guy. Uh, <laughs> I'm driving a cop car right yeah. now. Uh, they would be like, don't okay, worry about stop. It. Stop driving that cop car. Cause that's illegal. Uh, yeah. The number of times police officers were like, you know what, John Cena, <laughs> You go, you go do some vigilante mm. justice. You're like a big, beefy man. That's the other thing, too, I do think about. And The Rock had to deal with this, too. These are big dudes. But yes. they had to shrink down a little bit to make movies. Because Cena's looking huge here. Yeah. And there's yes. a, I do think the what's necessary for the wrestler body is not necessarily appealing as 
an actor. So you'll notice yeah. they get a little bit... Uh, they're still big and muscly, but they get slimmer, like in the face and neck. I was just looking... Because mm-hmm. there's a... there's a If you go to the, the IMDb for this movie, you know, they have pictures from this movie, but then a video started playing of Cena now. Yeah. And I just, I'm just looking at his neck. And yeah. you're just going like, oh, right. You look more like a guy... I mean, still... A, like a fucking person. unstoppable fighting machine, <laughs> yeah. but more like a guy. And I remember The Rock talking to talking about this, legitimately having to reshape his body to be more, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> approachable as a human. Yeah, right. Uh, exactly. And that's something I thought about is a big difference here, and especially, yeah. Uh, hmm. Now I, I do think that's just an interesting note that this is very yeah. De- this is very WWE, and it and it does speak to like well. Yeah, these guys are beefcakes, you know. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really think about that, but yeah, that that makes sense that they'd have it's, to transition. It's a also bit a thing. Like I, this brings up because, all right, look. Once again, I, I, I'll, I'll I'll drop off this eventually, but because I know people are going like, John, you really expect WWE's the Marine to make any sense from like a realistic military standpoint? <laughs> but one thing that drives me insane in these movies is when guys like Arnold or John Cena like this play Mm -hmm. these guys because if you look at these and i watch i mean i'm really into like military sort of thrillers and stuff like that Mm -hmm. they're not built like this because they don't they don't exercise for show muscles so if you look at uh i think um chris pratt just did that show the terminalist where he played a navy seal and i thought Mm -hmm. he got in the right kind of shape it's undefined muscle it is purely for strength yeah because all of the all of the showing all of the muscles that requires a level of dehydration yes uh that is not healthy actually <laughs> right uh so it's those not guys need to those guys need way. to be actually strong like real exactly. strong so they're kind of beefy on screen honestly real marines might be considered fat by a hollywood R- studio which right. is stupid but but they're not they're just they're just you know they're yeah a, movie a I, lot of muscle. A movie I highly recommend is uh, Triple Frontier with Ben Affleck mm. and Oscar Isaac, where they play special ops guys. And particularly Ben Affleck got into the kind of shape that's necessary for that, where it is it is that big neck just like, yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a wrecking ball of a man. Uh, Oscar yeah. Isaac, I think, can only get in so big a shape. Ben Affleck is just right. big. Uh, He's a very big dude, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so we open... <laughs> We open on John Cena, and he's scouting a rescue mission, but being told not to intervene. You know, like you do. Yeah, because he sees a bunch of his guys are being held by, oh boy, I mean, we can just skip just, past just, so- just generic Middle Eastern baddies. Yeah, yeah. And it will have nothing to do with the plot of the movie, so it doesn't really matter. Which I think is actually a benefit no, to the I, film. I, I agree. I would rather he... Because, okay, good, he's just going to fight some white people and stuff like that Yeah, later. thank God. Because, um, yeah, but it is just, oh, man. And this is also so in, like, the hills of Hollywood, right? This little mm-hmm. set they've built. This is nowhere near the Middle East. It's such a, nope. mo- such a movie set battle sequence. Yeah. But immediately, okay, and once again, I swear I will drop this. Cena, so they tell him not, and he goes in, they tell him not to intervene, and he goes in and he saves the other Marines, right? But he is just shooting from the hip, man, with this machine gun, unlike anyone trained to use firearms. (laughs) At no, that's the biggest thing, though, and I will say this. I know it's a WWE movie, but if the whole point is this guy is a Marine, Maybe send John Cena to a military training play. Like, th- this movie never takes advantage of him using military tactics. Nope. And that at, would at no point. No, and that would that's the thing. And I do think some of that is the. T- I do feel like particularly now we mm-hmm. really ex- we know what that should look like. And you look at movies yes. now, and they really really will work people. I mean, you look at the yeah, training. It's 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 more. It's it's noticed more. It's more important for for audiences because like, like the, that authenticity, the intensity of the training that Keanu does on John Wick in martial yeah. arts, in knife work, in guns. And it's you, also kind of a marketing thing as well. Yeah. Like you, they show how much work uh, Keanu Reeves does for the John Wick movies. Yeah, it's like shit, he's going to be great in this. Yeah, all the cruise stuff, the Top Gun, yeah. Mission Impossible. It's all about exactly. oh, he learned how to do the real stuff. 
And mm-hmm. so then, you know, it <laughs> it leads to people like me who've never been in any branch of the military going, hmm, excellent, you know, tactics. Oh, wow, yeah. great form. Yeah, okay. yeah, I am going like that guy. But, I, I mean, I don't really know. I, I only know what it – but – like I know John Cena just laying waste with this gun at his hip <laughs> is not how any professional soldier. And then, okay, this is the beginning of this movie not understanding how fire works. <laughs> it's just a long running bit of not understanding fire. It's so funny. Fire never hurts anyone in this movie. Basically. No. Not until the very, very end. Right. But like the amount of there, fire is just a thing, because yeah, <laughs> this it's is a very set dressing. This is very can. I will say this does have some canon vibes to it. This movie, yes, uh, and I think we may see that from the WWE movies in general. But when he at point blank hits the grenade launcher on this rifle, <laughs> and I'm just going like everyone's dead. <laughs> Every- <laughs> that whole room, that whole room would be obliterated. There's- it's not it, it's because it's not just fire. There's also a, a concussive blast that yeah. would tear them to pieces. Uh, yeah, you don't <laughs> you don't ever shoot a grenade inside of a room like no, <laughs> especially not a room that you're standing in. You're standing in. You're rescuing these hostages. <laughs> That's also, the best part. Too, yeah. Also, once that again, hostages. I don't understand why Cena's out here alone. I don't understand what was he supposed to do. I don't know. Surveil, maybe. It's 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 so it's this is this is just where the bad screenwriting begins, and it won't end until yeah. the credits roll. Uh, yeah. But it is just like it just they need something that he can disobey orders. But we as an audience would be like, but the orders were wrong, man. Cena yes. was right, you know. Yeah, exactly. So that it's just, I... It's a shorthand for... I, it, as a divorced short... dad with my Miller Genuine Draft. Did you notice the Miller sponsorship in this movie? Oh, did I, John? It was hard, uh, it was hard to miss, There's honestly. a trivia note that says, if you look... <laughs> I think it does say, if you look closely, all the beer in this movie is Miller Genuine Draft. I'm like, dude, of course. It's, <laughs> what? it's hilarious it's... that it's the only beer. <laughs> and also... <laughs> I mean, not being a beer drinker, I don't know anyone who drinks that shit. I don't either. Um, yeah, that, and that is divorced dad shit right there. It, it's uh, it it's obvious because of how often you don't see labels of beer yes. in movies. So when you do see the label, you're like, well, obviously they got paid a lot. Of well, money one of my favorite things in, in most movies is when somebody opens up a beer and the can just says beer. <laughs> I do love that. Yeah. Yeah. What was the the there was the Chuck Norris movie where he only drank a certain kind of beer? Oh yeah. It was Lone Wolf uh, McQuaid. I don't remember what the beer was, but it was something about that where he's like, he's like, do you have this? They're like, no. He's like, then forget it. <laughs> I don't know anyone who's that kind of allegiance to a certain beer. I don't uh, know. I mean, I know people yeah. who go like these the following beers or whatever but like yeah the idea uh like my dad will go like do you have this no this no you know whatever right like mm-hmm. sort of thing um that kind of thing but not not yeah. where it's just like i drink one brand one brand only or here's apparently a world where only miller beer exists yes also so this is a oh, this is just, an alternate universe yes the, this is an alternate universe. the other thing i was gonna say is i know what their bottles and logo look like too so that's the thing yes. too is it's a distinctive that black with the gold Mm-hmm. I love like shitty domestic beer like that that really tries to go like Miller Genuine Draft, the cleanest clear. You know, you're going like no, yeah, the this... champagne of beer, John. That's what I mean. It's the Budweiser too, where they always try to go like mm, that's the good mm. stuff, and you're just Ooh. going and and once again, even not being somebody who drinks beer, I'm going yeah, I know that's garbage. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's it's tr- perfectly drinkable yeah. white watery beer. Yeah, you know? that's that's yeah. This is what I've heard. Uh, all right, so they tell. So he goes in. Uh, he shoots everybody, blows up this room, and mm-hmm. then of course there's. <laughs> they go outside, and there's a million more guys in a big helicopter, and uh, the guy goes. Uh, one of the other Marines says, "How do we get around them?" And Cena loads up his gun and says, "We don't. We go through them." <laughs> and then they run at the camera. <laughs> And then it just cuts to days later. Yeah, because they don't have the budget for that. <laughs> and also, I didn't even have to be told the. Well, I went, hey, man, 
some of this footage of the desert and the helicopters looks like it's from Rambo. And then I look mm. on the IMDb and they reused B footage from Rambo three. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't That's immediately so think it actually was footage from Rambo. I just thought, Hey, this those look like Soviet like era helicopters that Rambo <laughs> fights in the third Rambo movie. Oh shit. They are. That's so funny. That's so cheap. I- yeah. Yeah. How do you get away with that? If the studio has licensed the footage, it's, I mean, movies, here's the thing. Movies use footage, like uh-huh. B-roll footage from other movies all the time. In, oh, in ter- okay. But it's generally not that specific. It's generally like <laughs> some big budget movie did a bunch of establishing shots of New York. So mm. now all of our movies don't have to go film shots of New York buildings because this oh. movie... Got, like I think people for years were using Spider-Man shot footage of New York because that, that movie had sense. so much money, and they it's not even footage they use necessarily, but it's just like, oh yeah, Spider-Man shot a couple angles of the Empire State Building, so we can use those. Oh, there's cool. that kind of stuff I that's sitting in the vault. Legitimately didn't know that. Yeah, that's but it really but it's it's generally not things like helicopters flying necessarily or something like that. Right. Yeah. And especially where I'm going, like the air is wrong. <laughs> The air is completely wrong. I know, that, yeah. yeah. And and those helicopters, very disti- those Russian attack choppers were very distinctive in Rambo 3. Yeah. Um, and also, I mean, this movie, this movie's trying to be Rambo. It's really trying to be Commando. That's what I kept thinking. Yes. It is. Yes. This is 100%. low budget Commando. Yes. Because um, these action set pieces aren't. The other thing is, I, the other thing I kept thinking is Commando never stops and sl- uh, and goes through a slog like this movie does. Yes. Commando's like 85 minutes and it's, it's pretty lame. much non-stop. And that's the thing, once again, if you're going to be this silly, you kind of can't stop. You know what I mean? Like, you, no. it needs to be, you need to not think about it. You just, it's like, Arnold's going to kill 150 people in this movie <laughs> and you're just going to go, <laughs> man. Um, yeah. We'll definitely, we are definitely doing a Commando commentary at some point. Oh, yeah. That, that's a classic. So, anyway, uh, <laughs> They throw him out of the Marines for this, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, although, once again, like see, it's classic. Like, but Sarge, I was wrong. And it's like I don't know, man. He's getting like an honorable discharge. Like, I'd say good enough. Like, let's not push yeah. it. Like, they're yes. they're not they're they're gonna like quietly kick him out, but not screw him over. Well, th- that leads to his his big. Co- character conflict i guess which he has a bit of an identity crisis in this movie he does and and here's he's like here's something oh, I was, uh, the identity crisis thing as you bring that up and something we ask in a lot of these movies does john triton have an arc in this movie no no, no. He, they completely abandon <laughs> his identity crisis as soon as his girlfriend gets kidnapped they do <laughs> they, not give a fuck they, about him as a character they at that start point. one yes where you're going like oh and they're they're they they're starting a movie, <laughs> but as soon as they started the identity crisis thing, I'm like, you guys don't want to make this movie. <laughs> no, no, they. You do guys not. don't want to make the Hurt Locker or something like that, you know? Where it is, no, where it's no, actually a they... movie about guys who can't not be soldiers and stuff like that. Um, yeah. By the way, great fucking movie. Go watch the Hurt it's, Locker, everybody. It is great movie. An astounding yeah. movie that's uh, actually about what it's like to be a soldier. Yeah. Um. No, and so he's just like, but and they're just like, hey man, just take the papers and go. So he comes home to his wife, who is super hot, as the movie keeps telling us. Yeah, Kelly. Yeah, Carlson. Maggie. Maggie's like, you know that she's attractive because even though her hair is terrible, she is still attractive. <laughs> Kelly Carlson is this actress who was on at this time. I was a big fan of the show Nip Tuck. Right. Yeah. And she was on there. Uh. And uh, and she was good on this. She's a good actress. Not that you'd ever mm-hmm. know. She's a prop in this movie. She is. I, I, I think that there's a couple of scenes that might have been improvised, honestly, between Cena and her that felt actually pretty fun. Because they're know? actually good actors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <It's, laughs> uh, no, it is like, I think you're right. And it is almost like the movie's going like, let's get past this shit, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Let's get we her don't... in her underwear. That's what we care about, right? Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's oh. Cool. That's the stuff, man. Uh, yeah. That. That. What? Those are the divorced dads at home, man. She doesn't look anything like my bitch of an ex-wife. 
<laughs> that's very true. Uh, no, no, she's oh man. Uh, before this, she was in Starship Troopers two. Um, a movie we will have to do at some point on here. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. I think that might. Oh, it's directed by Phil Tippett though. That's interesting. Huh. That is interesting. Who did the effects on the first one? So. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not. I'm not going to get my hopes up about that though. Um, no. But no. yeah, I. I. I mean, it's a bummer because I actually do think I would have watched a movie about these two. But. Hmm. But she gets this whole thing about just like I'm so glad you're home. I'm always worried you were gonna die over in the war. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I don't care. I I wish I was still there. <laughs> yeah, there is sort of that thing too, where it's just like, dude, I don't know what this is. This is just like, well, what else would you want to do other than be killing people in a foreign land? <laughs> they also it's like we should. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, when you get to him as the security guard and stuff, I thought. He's so highly trained, as we see. Yes, there'd be like overqualified. Sec- there'd be like security work that this guy would be really up. Not security guard, but like private security. Oh yeah, oh uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of these guys go into that. Uh, yeah, governmental security, uh, celebrities, mm-hmm. and things like that. I mean, mm-hmm. he 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 has a prized set of skills. So the fact that they're like, yeah, man, all I can do is get this. And actually, even a security guard job was in like a super nice building. He was probably getting paid pretty well with good benefits. Yeah. But he's yeah, like, but... I don't get to kill anyone. <laughs> Basically, yeah. this guy's like. That is really what it is. Like, if I can't cause... murder. I need to murder. What am I doing here? Because <laughs> the, the other guy seems to be just fine with this cushy gig. Oh, the other guy who uh, you or I would play, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The the doughy friend. <laughs> yeah, the do the doughy friend who who plays uh, his Game Boy on the job. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's that's distinctly where it becomes us, right? Is the well, yeah. I had a Game Boy, but they took it away. Whoa. <laughs> oh, I'm a nerd. This guy though goes on to be on Gotham. Uh, oh, okay. Drew Powell, who played his friend here, he plays Solomon Grundy on Gotham. So, oh, that's okay. pretty good. He plays a big Batman I, villain. I think he was pretty good. He was, a, I mean, everything is broad in this movie, including his performance. I will but, say though, like a lot of people, he's been in, he's continued to act and is in like real movies and TV shows. He's like an uh, actual so actor. Are are him and John Cena good friends? In this. Yeah, I think so. In this movie, I think it's un- it's kind of unclear though, because because they imply so he gets let go. Yeah, uh, from because <laughs> uh, because somebody's an asshole and he throws this person through a window. I will say two things about this. All right, we got to talk yes. about just this whole scene in general. So Cena's okay, working yeah. as a security guard in like some kind of like business office building, right? Like it's some kind of one of those major like skyscraper buildings where there's lots of businesses in them, right? And he's working the front yes. desk security. Now, this guy comes in who is a cartoonish monster, right? Yes. Oh, I mean, absolutely. And has henchmen, which really made me laugh, who will <laughs> bust out some kung fu moves. <laughs> I really... When that uh, guy throws like a like a high kick, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what is happening? Okay, this is this right, is maybe. very WWE, and that this is a world where everyone has expert level fighting skills. Right? Of course, You're just yeah. like, um, uh, he goes upstairs, acts like a total psycho who seems really like a particularly now we would be like he is going to shoot everyone in this office. Yes, he, yes, that the, is the impression he's the off. rage he's yelling at his girlfriend, calling a whore, calling her a mm-hmm. whore and stuff. I, he a hundred percent reads his mass shooter. Uh, yes. like we would be so worried about this guy now. Yeah. Two. They totally start this. The, the this uh-huh. this, this yeah, shitty yeah. guy and his friends. Now, yeah. did Cena need to throw him through the window? Mm, probably not. But I don't know that Cena's like so out of control the way that they. You know, what I mean, like. Uh, yeah. They would be upset that he broke their window, and it's unnecessary. But I well, don't they, know that it would be like you fucking nut job, Cena. You know? Well, this well, this movie has to go out of its way to make John Cena never do anything wrong. Yes. Uh, he's so al- he's always heroic. It's always the system, man. 
Exactly, exactly. Um, which is so funny that he wants to work for the military. But uh, actually, you know what? Okay. <laughs> Here I go trying to make movies better. Um, he should have he should have resigned from the Marines because they told him not to save his guys. Yeah, they should have. They should have like said he could stay, but he had to be punished or like lose a rank, and he quits. That would have been a more interesting yes. character move. And two, yes. he should be in the wrong and have gone too far here. Even if this guy yes. was an asshole, we should see that he's got a violent tendency. Mm-hmm. Yes, but, but that is a different movie. <laughs> that is a different movie. That is getting closer to Jeremy Renner and the Hurt Locker, and it is like, right. uh, which right. I, I have always been upset. I think the end of that movie is so brilliant where it's just a guy who goes, I can't be part of society. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's a it's a dark sad but kind of weird oh, it's such a great ending of just like mm -hmm. yeah man I, if i'm not over there then i'm i can't be here uh i mm -hmm. love it and that and that's that's almost what they do with this guy and then so close it, he is just such he just he might as well be wearing an american flag you know what i mean like he is right, just so exactly. like oh that's the guy right there and once again the divorced dads at home lifting up their miller lights going fuck yeah i feel like uh, Peacemaker is almost like a commentary yeah. on this type of character. You know what I mean? Well, because absolutely, it is sort of the thing about uh, that's a guy who doesn't compromise ever. And and you, dude, you got to watch the show because the show is literally about him realizing, wait, my <laughs> never compromising can be used to turn me into a bad guy. Yes, the people oh, wow. running yeah. the system who are giving me orders know. Mike, because uh, I don't want to spoil the Suicide Squad. People should see it if they haven't. Yes. But he does something objectively terrible in that movie. And yes. so much of the Peacemaker show is him reckoning with that and going, holy shit. Maybe by having no gray areas, I can mm. be manipulated into conceivably doing the right thing. But actually, yes. I'm a fucking monster. Yes. It's great, I mean, man. he literally says in the Suicide Squad, uh, I... I will do. What is, I, will I, 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 I worship peace. Uh, I, I, I will do anything to get peace. I don't care how many men, women, and children I have to kill to get it. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> what it is. Yeah. <laughs> and it is sort of like the thing about and Gunn talked about this. The thing that's great about that character is he's totally sincere in saying that. Oh, he yeah. does not see that that's a silly statement. The thing is, then when he wrote the Peace Mary show, he goes, "Okay, what makes a guy think like that?" right exactly and yeah can that guy then start to go oh that might Ooh. not be a good way to live life actually yeah yeah um great great fun. i can't wait for season two man it's so good uh and cena is just do, doing incredible work in it uh yeah so uh meanwhile let's cut to our bad guy rome robert patrick who's sure. about to pull off i gotta say this might be the worst group of criminals I've ever seen in any film. <laughs> they are objectively horrible at crime. There is only one group of criminals that I would say is worse. Who is that? And that is the group of criminals in 211. Yeah. Yeah. They were worse. They were. They were worse. But, but this this group. <laughs> they're, they're maybe they're, the next. Like, they're definitely a follow-up of like. This is pure incompetence this is the polar opposite of robert de niro's gang and heat like yes. there is no yes. finesse there are no nope. tactics nope. It, it is sheer chaos and it's amazing they get as far as they do in this movie really. i don't i don't know how i the, legitimately don't know how the manhunt for these people based on what they do in this scene would mm -hmm. be never ending they would literally yes. draw the ire of every branch of law enforcement it would yes. be <laughs> it would be we i mean in reality of course all the branches of law enforcement kind of jockey with each other this would be the one time that they would go like no these people must be found we must all cooperate i have no doubt in my mind because <laughs> we talked about this on uh on i think on riot where we're going like the second a rocket launcher is yep. used in an urban environment in america mm -hmm that is the end of that person. Like, it's just like yes. you would, there would never, no one's ever, I don't think anyone's ever done that. That is an act of, they would patriarch that guy, patriot act mm. that guy into non-existence. Oh, yes, 100%. <laughs> yes. And so it's insane. So they go into this jewelry store 
Once again, there's no finesse. Rob Patty just walks in and punches out the security guard. <laughs> and then pulls out uh, uh, this gun that he carries in this movie. Yeah, I don't I have it here. What... It's uh, Well, it's often referred to colloquially as a baby desert eagle. Uh, okay. But it's it's uh, it's actually the Jericho 941F. It's a pretty cool gun, actually. I've always liked this, the the, the like just the design of it. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, he he comes in here and uh, and and immediately takes over the place. His <laughs> uh, he pulls his gun, and then the guy who's with him has to pull two guns, of course. Uh, and the guy who's with him, sort of his main co henchman, the yeah. guy with the spiky hair, Manu Bennett. Uh, is yeah. the actor who's playing Bennett, which is weird. Uh, in the yeah, movie. that is weird. <laughs> well, um, John Cena's playing John. That's so, true. You know. But he will also go on to play a DC character. He played Deathstroke on the TV show Arrow. Uh, oh. This guy. I, I like him. He was also on uh, the Spartacus TV show. Um, mm. He's a good actor. Not that you'd ever know. He's a total nothing in this movie. Mm, uh, yeah. But he was really good as Deathstroke. A uh, character that actually has a lot of layers as a villain. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, actually... And of course, I can the comic book fans out there are going like, "Well, Deathstroke's maybe more complicated than just calling him a villain." Um, but uh, this guy is just there. Yeah, I just <laughs> Patrick starts punching. They mm-hmm. hold hostage. This was the one mildly clever thing I thought in the movie when he holds this woman hostage to get the guy to open the door, and then she's one of the crew. I was like, yes. "Okay, that is um, not original necessarily, but like that's no. something. That's some." It is move in a screenplay yes. <laughs> <laughs> i'm looking for anything in the marine man yeah but then also the guy in the vault is in on it like everyone well, is in on it in this movie oh the guy wait the guy in the vault is he the one that gets shot yeah so this was unclear because i wasn't sure if he was in on it or not well uh so because he, he 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 fakes putting the gun to the girl's head or he, put, he, yeah. he fakes that she's in his... And he goes, like, you better open the safe or I'm going to kill her. And the guy does. But then after they get the diamonds, because this is a jewelry store, so they're stealing a bunch of diamonds. Yeah. Uh, uncut gems, if you will. Watch that movie mm. instead. Because um, it's brilliant. Uh, but... Um, Just like diamonds. <laughs> uh, they... The guy says, oh, you better hit me to make it look real. Right. So the question is... If he was in on it, mm-hmm. then why fake the the hostage with, yeah, with that's, the woman? Yeah, that's what I was baffled by as well. Yeah. Because I – and why – and when they're talking later about – because Robert Patrick shoots him, they're yeah, not well, like, you shot one of our team members. They are, they're like – I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. It, it, uh, it, well, the whole movie is pretty – but I will say it's it's one of those one liners where he says, uh, "You better hit me to make it to make it look real." And then he shoots him in the head and he says, "Now that's real." <laughs> but then they go outside and the cops are rolling up, and Rod Pash just pulls a machine gun out of the trunk of his car and just yep. opens up. Yeah, they're just casually walking down the sidewalk after murdering somebody in a jewelry <laughs> store. Well, they also uh, they take way too long in the jewelry store. There yeah. is no, this is what I'm talking about them being bad thieves. There is no like we've timed police responses. Like that's the classic mm-hmm. thing I want out of a Mike. Like what I think of from like a Michael Mann movie, really any heist movie, right? It's like yeah. Wh- there's no scene where it's like we've got 30 seconds, boss. They just take their sweet ass time in this jewelry store, yeah. Which means uh, then the cops are all. Also, every cop in this movie drives some kind of sports car, cop car. I was also wondering about that. Yeah, I, those aren't real. No, no. It, this movie is just. A, you do have to accept this is a fantasy world at some point. In the yes, story. yes. Oh, it is. It's totally a fantasy world where cops drive sports cars. Yeah. And only Miller exists as a beer. Only Miller exists as a beer. And fire, because this is the first example of it. Well, we mentioned the one earlier, but this yes. one is the most egregious. No, there's uh, two. No. This one's yeah. pretty bad, though, because the guy. One of the other guys pulls out a rocket launcher and blows up this cop car, and the fire from it spreads out, but for some reason just kind of stops in front of Robert Patrick. Yeah. Like, he's 
He's just perfectly placed at the edge of the fl- at the flame. And he's kind of like cats in slow motion walking next to the explode. I remember that being in the trailer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and he, he got a car sort of lifts up for some reason. <laughs> yeah. And then it and then Maggie pointed out it kind of disappears. Like the CG just yeah. kind of stops at a certain point. By the way, I, I, I'm sure they don't listen, but I would love the Corridor Crew guys to do an episode about <laughs> the Marine because there's yes. some atrocious CGI in this movie. Yeah, either the Marine, oh my God, or like when uh, Robert Patrick is firing the gun and the shell flies up. I'm yeah. Like, That's not cool it at is all. Ho- and I will say this whole movie, the directing is horrible because this is a movie that yeah. has some money, as we said. Yeah. But where they choose to use it, the amount of like uh uh rack speed zooms and like whoosh, 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 you know, where the camera is quickly moving in and out of stuff. And I'm just yeah. going, Oh my god. I mean, it's indicative of a lot of stuff that came out at this time. Yes. But yeah, that the the CGI shell casings coming right Ugh. at the camera. Also, so those bad. shell casings are firing so high into the air. I, right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> they don't eject straight up into the air like that. No, they eject no. out the side. Yes, because uh, you don't want hot metal to potentially to ra- fall on you to rain down on you. The idea yeah. is they just kind of they go down <laughs> to the ground. Yeah, yeah. yes. Uh, I know it's a big problem for left-handed shooters that the shell casings come back at them. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I know because I just used that in a script. Uh, hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, my my note just says car goes up all exclamation or all caps three exclamation points. <laughs> it goes literally up. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and then disappears. And then dis. You're right. It never really does come down, does it? It just kind no. of no. Yeah. Uh, it... And then we get oh my god the the character who could have just disappeared. Detective Van Buren. This man who is, he is actually six foot three, but he he looks like he's seven feet tall in this yeah. movie for some reason. Because he's he's very tall, he's very thin, mm-hmm. and uh, well, incredibly forgettable. Because scene is very wide. I don't know if he's like crazy tall. He's yeah, six he's foot like... even. Okay. So, but he's wider than he's tall, and this guy is super thin and tall. So I think yeah. he reads as taller than everybody. And I think Patrick's actually pretty tall, too. Oh, really? I think so. What do they have him at? They got him at 5'11", so not a short guy. No. But also kind of but also kind of reedy and thin, particularly in Terminator 2, right? Yes. Um, yes. So, you know, these are kind of... And then, and then particularly next to Cena, who is, you know, t- taller than average, but so wide. These guys right. do read as tall, I think. But yeah. his whole thing is, I'm going, what's the point of this character? Then at a certain point, you start to go, oh, he's definitely crooked, isn't he? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yes. But uh, you could have cut him out of the movie entirely, and it wouldn't have mattered. There's a lot you could have cut out of this movie, and it and wouldn't have mattered. And it's already 92 minutes long. <laughs> yes. Well, because there's no content here. Yeah. It's just they need to pad. It's a, a classic example of them padding out a movie so that it's a movie. The movie. the most egregious example is that scene when he gets captured by those backwoods guys. That was crazy. John, that was so unnecessary. And the movie was literally like, let's just pause the plot for just like five minutes. Yeah, because he's, he's captured so briefly. And yes, it's, it's, and then he immediately goes back to okay. I'm I'm just going back to it. No, it is it is the 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 bad use. We always talk about. We love Joel Silver on this show, action producer yeah. Joel Silver. But his note about there needs to be an action beat every ten pages. This is how to poorly implement that. Where you're just going like, yes, uh, we'll just stop the movie so John Cena can hit a couple guys. Yes, and I was like, so he gets knocked on. Well, we'll get to that, but. It looked like it was a different time of day. It looked like it was yeah. night. And I was like, how much time has passed? And then he goes back to it. It's like, oh, no, it's literally five minutes later. Well, the like, amount of time that passes in this movie is minutes. very unclear because where are they in relation to where that jewelry store they robbed was versus where they're going to meet up with John Cena and his wife? How long have yeah. they been on the run? The other thing, yeah, I know they're filming in South Carolina. I think. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah. Well, the movie's set in South Carolina. 
Oh, okay. So maybe it's not. They're filming. <laughs> uh, listen, they're filming in Queensland, Australia. <laughs> okay. Okay. For South Carolina. I, South Carolina. I guess. I mean, that, that's not terrible. I mean, yeah. in terms of the look, it didn't it didn't immediately read, but yeah, it's a tax dodge, obviously. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, you know, which sense. every movie does. That's not necessarily, mm-hmm. but um, <laughs> but so yeah, but yeah. The other thing the movie does is they keep talking about this rising tide that's going to be. Then we won't be able to chase them once the tide rises. But the movie never does anything visually to indicate that. I completely forgot that was a component of the film and I watched it last or two it's, days it's ago. It's the reason why the cop lets John Cena go. He goes, well, the tide is rising. You might get to them before we do. And we're, you know, sort of, cause he's like, cause, cause once again, there's all this like, well, I'm a Marine and they go, okay. Uh, well, that lets you have you know free what? range to murder anyone you want. You know what Great. I feel like any real cop would do? We definitely do don't want a loose cannon ex-military guy running around that's uh, yeah chaos yes <laughs> you know what well, go ahead <laughs> you, you know what do you think but then that guy's crooked so what is why does he let cena go i don't know john i don't know <laughs> he could have just killed him well, I don't really understand Robert Patrick's motivation by kidnapping the wife, other than the classic, we might need a hostage. But that's so paper thin as criminal oh, motivation. Oh, they, they literally only have it there. It's just an excuse. Yeah. Everything is just an excuse for the quote-unquote plot. Because There's no real motivation. Cena and his wife are taking a trip out of town because he's all bummed about not being able to kill people anymore and yeah he's like what am i supposed to do stay here with you oh jesus christ jesus what, what am i supposed neck. to do just have sex with my hot wife who loves me oh oh god i know i am just going Imagine. like immediately i have i in no way relate to john Triton. <laughs> Uh, nope. Don't care about him at all beyond just generally liking John Cena and other things. Right. Um, right. He's an infinitely more complex character in the Fast and the Furious. I'm not kidding. I know. That's the thing. Even the fucking Fast and the Furious, man, which is total insanity, is like, oh, no, actually, he's a fairly complex emotional character with a backstory and reason for what yes. he's doing. And yes. you understand him. That's the thing that's amazing about this. Well, it, it just takes any amount of thinking about that's, character. That's the like thing. Like, any thought. Well, and that's the, that's what separates and makes the Fast and the Furious such a successful franchise. Is it's like, oh, no, there is character work. We can have insane yeah. action and some emotional grounding. Yes, In there fact, has to be some sort of emotional resonance. But they almost seem like... They're allergic to having any amount of emotional resonance. Because you know why? Because it's gay. Gay. <laughs> I, I mean, I do think there's sort of the, well, what is it? We're supposed to be crying like a pussy? Well, I mean, this movie is very homophobic. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. So, well, so I mean, homophobic. W- that's the thing that's always kind of hilarious to me about the WWE. And look, I am not against it, but it is sort of this thing for Macho Town, but it is a bunch of sweaty. You know, mostly undressed Shirtless guys. Shirtless men wrestling. Wrestling, <laughs> and, like, they're always, like, getting real close to each other and going, yeah, yeah, buddy. You know, you're just going, yeah. like, I mean, it's pretty homoerotic. I, I, it, it is, I yeah. don't know if it has. It must have some form of gay following because I get the appeal from that aspect. Totally. Sure, of course. Totally. And it's sort of like there are scantily clad women, but that's not the main focus. <laughs> like, it's like, right, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, it mainly is about beefy men. And it is kind of, I think, also, man, this is welcome to us psychoanalyzing the WWE, which we'll be doing for the rest of the month. But I we do will, think there yeah. is something about, and I think this is true in, in action movies as well, there mm-hmm. is something about this is the non-gay way or, or a way for heterosexual men to appreciate men's bodies without feeling gay yes now i'm not saying that 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 they that they should feel gay about that uh i'm saying that would be their rationale right it's sort of this idea of going like oh look at that he's a prime specimen Uh, not that there's a sexual component to it because we're fighting it's it's part of the the power fantasy yes you know like this absolutely this person is my power fantasy yeah uh yeah uh but this like i want to be this guy but if you even remotely indicate 
that somebody might enjoy it for a homosexual purpose is like, oh, I don't think so. You know, right. know. Yeah. What? There's like a def- there's what? like a, a strong defensiveness Where? about that kind of like, thing. Like the, 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 I, I see this when people talk about Top Gun, right? Top Gun has a huge gay following. The first one, which makes uh, sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I'm just keep going like, no, of course not. Explicitly in the text, they are heterosexual. We get right. that. That's not. That's always the thing where I go like, when people talk about enjoying things from a, a homosexual perspective, that's not changing the text. You no. don't. You don't have to acknowledge that. <laughs> No, it's just being viewed from another perspective. Yeah. Like that's that's a good thing. I will thing. say Tony You're getting a Tony uh, Scott who ahead. directed Top Gun, he knew what he was doing with that volleyball scene. He said Oh much. sure. He goes, he goes, that was a little something for the fellas out there. You know? <laughs> I mean, and the song that's playing is literally playing with the boys. <laughs> I was just like, come on, you guys. Yeah. Uh, there's the, yeah, anyway. Uh, but, the, but yeah, I, even I just... earlier, it, when uh, he's a security guard, mm-hmm. his, fr- his, his doughy friend is like, let's, you know, let's not jump to, con- like, like, let's calm down. We don't need violence. And then as soon as, as the douchebag uh, implied that him and John Cena were were a gay couple, then he's like, "All right, over now the you line." Too far. Because yeah. in a movie like this, the worst thing you can be is gay. Right. Exactly. Absolutely yeah. awful. Are you right. kidding? We've seen this before. This attitude too, where it's like, "Yeah, you can say anything you want about me, but what did you just call me gay?" Yes, yes. That is a action shelf staple. Well, because it's a divorced dad staple. Yep. But, and, and, yeah, because divorced dad, as we started, we've started, we talked about, it's problematic divorced dads. There are decent yes. divorced dads, but it is leaning into the... It's le- Okay, it's leaning into conservative, but they also don't pay any attention to politics conservative. Yes, exactly. Like, they have no real beliefs. Exactly. Yes. You know, sort of thing, but it's just like, I love America and beer. And I'm afraid of gay people. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's about the end of it. They voted yes. for Trump, but they have no. They've never listened to anything he's actually said. Uh, no. <laughs> so they stop at this gas station. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cena does mm-hmm. with the wife on their way to the old fishing cabin. I guess. And on, there's on a mountain. Oh, th- there's two there's two things in this movie that really disturb me with how blase they are. This mm. is the this is the first one when Cena says, "Oh yeah, my dad took us up there because people couldn't hear us when we screamed." And I'm like, "Okay." I and, and- <laughs> if I heard that, I would be so concerned. Yeah. I would be so concerned about I'm, going to I'm just this like, cabin with him. Um, okay. Uh, what does that mean? But also just this like quick thing about like oh yeah I was an abused child uh, anyway but that's not even close to as bad as the one we'll get to later which oh, is Jesus shock uh, I mean shook John, me I am not I easily shaken by movies listening. horrified I was horrified <laughs> by what they were presenting was, as a hilarious joke I was watching this yesterday and I was actually shaken to my core by what happened yes like legitimately yes. I was like yes. I mean, it's one. It's it's a rare time. I am not a pearl clutching viewer. You know this. I watch the most disturbing of stuff. But honestly, the blase, humorous nature with, with which they talk about child molestation later, I was is literally like, "Crazy! That's not okay. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> not okay at all." No. There's nothing okay about it's... making a joke about that. And I just went like, uh, "Is there gonna be some?" No. Okay. No. Uh, okay. Anyway, but this it's was the other one too, line. where he just All goes right. like, "Oh yeah, my father beat the shit out of us." Anyway, uh, you need anything from the convenience? Store? What? Well, because because it, it's that's that's uh, buying into the this mythos of like, yeah, well, you know, fathers beat the shit out of their kids sometimes. And once again, you know? what, what am I going to cry about? Like a pussy? Yeah, it's exactly. That, that's that, the mentality. Yeah, it's presenting that as okay. I think I, I, I don't. I, I I think it's I think it's presenting it as like well what are you gonna do, right? It's not it's not, it's, it's it, not making a moral judgment. It just that just happens. That's the shit yeah, that happens. It's, it's not necessarily good or bad. It's just not a big deal. Yeah, you know we all got knocked around by our dads, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. I turned out great. Uh, <laughs> so Robert Patrick is also filling up his car. Uh huh. And then this cop car rolls in. 
and in a Camaro. Yeah, uh, he's yeah, driving I did. a Camaro. For yeah, some reason. a Camaro cop car, a <laughs> bulletproof Camaro. Because uh, uh, cop, you know, police stations, particularly in like small backwater towns, can definitely afford those. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Well, one of the reasons cops drive the cars they drive is because they're cheap. They drive like Crown Vicks and stuff like that because yeah. they're you can buy a lot of them cheaply. <laughs> Yes. And then they retrofit them with battering rams and armor and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, this, <laughs> they, also, cops don't need the kind of power that's in a, <laughs> like, even no. in a high-speed chase, it's more about how you're driving than this mm -hmm. car can get to 200, you know, or whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but whatever. Again, this is a, yeah, this is a this fantasy, is a fantasy world. world. But this, okay, here's another great example of these guys being horrible because they <laughs> entirely create the situation, these things. Yes. This yes. cop is just asking Robert Patrick about his car. There is yes. no indication he's being suspicious about anything. There, he's never nope. reaching for his gun or anything. He's nope. just going like, ah, got a Cadillac there, huh? And, oh, oh we, I mean, we skipped over the scene where the guy got the Cadillac, which is also an incredibly dumb decision. Uh, oh, that's right. Because yes. the the yes. Uh, unfortunately, I I call, I will refer to I have to refer to him as the black man on the team because he yes. refers to himself as that. Yes, that, Morgan that is his only and... defining character. Well, he has two defining characteristics. One, he's, he's oh a black man. shit! And I know this guy. I know, I know. This he's, guy has he's Dozer has some... in Ma yeah. in the Matrix. Oh yes. my god! I didn't I recognize know. him. One of it's my all-time favorite movies, The Matrix. Yes. And, I mean, it's a masterpiece. And, <laughs> to to be in The Matrix it. and this. Oh, man, I'm glad to see he's still yeah. working. Um, yeah. But, Christ, man. Oh, man, this is a horrible part. Uh, yes. But, yeah, he has two characteristics. He is a black man, and he is the unhinged one who likes to blow shit up. Yes. There's a scene where he goes to, like, a chop shop, right? Some kind of crime. Yes. And and the guy goes, I'm gonna give you this minivan. He's like, What? No black man's gonna be driving in a minivan. That's dumb. And the guy very reasonably goes, Yeah, but they won't be looking for a minivan. So it's actually a really smart thing. And then when the guy's turned, this guy just takes this flashy Cadillac, which will draw sure attention, does. and then immediately does draw attention, but not mm -hmm. in any kind of actually suspicious way. And my favorite part of that scene in the chop shop is how long it is. It's, it's very, very long. long. It's unnecessarily long. Bits this is another bits comedy bit. on bits. Yeah. For yeah. This I'm just like, oh, and boy. the chop shop guy is only in that scene, but gets like a whole thing. Yeah, I don't understand why. And has like he... a history with this character and stuff. Apparently. Well, because for some reason he knows about what happened to him with the summer camp. Right, because he offers him rock candy, which, by the way, that's not that's... very commonplace. I never see anyone with rock candy. So the yeah, fact that they mention yeah. as much that's... as they do in this movie is weird. True, he does. Uh, yeah, because I assumed it was just a, it was just a coincidence that he brought up the rock candy. But yeah, he probably does. No, he well, I assume this goes, chop shot is goes, part of a criminal organization. It's it's, it's got to be. Because yeah. he goes, he goes rock candy. He goes, no man, you know I don't need that. He goes, oh yeah, man, I forgot. I because oh, right. and he he sort of says this like because of this, like yeah, man. He goes, yeah, that was messed up or whatever. So, <laughs> so this guy's telling lots of people this story, I guess. <laughs> oh, fucking no, this is so weird. It's so weird. It's the God. weirdest part of this movie for a movie that has uh, a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was shocking. Yeah, I will say. Well, it, I mean, I just, just I don't the know. callousness of it. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was shocking. Well, and I thought, I mean, here I didn't really clock this until later, but I'm going like, oh, I'm sure there'll be some kind of thing about rock candy. Rock or, candy. I yeah. didn't expect it to be what it is by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. So he sees this cop talking to Robert Patrick, and the guy's just going like, oh, Cadillac, huh? Oh, he's got a Vegas bumper sticker, huh? You ever get to Vegas mm -hmm. and stuff like that? He goes, oh, my brother mm -hmm. lives there. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, Dozer, I'm just going to call him Dozer now, uh, yeah. comes out and just shoots this cop in the back of the head for no reason. Yep. And then that requires Robert Patrick to then shoot the cop in the car, who starts trying to back the car away, yes. but gets shot a bunch of times. 
Yes. But he th- uh, it's only he backs it away only so it isn't caught in the explosion so that John Cena can drive it in the next scene. That that is correct. Again, there's no motivation. It's just what needs to happen to move the script. And this forward. is where the CGI shell casings are when he's shooting this cop. Yes. Yes. Which is also uh, not only does it look terrible and doesn't make mm-hmm. any sense from a physics standpoint, yes. what does it indicate? Like there's no reason why this scene needs that. You know what I mean? Like there's no reason why this is the point that you would implement that. Like, this is a key. Well, because you know, they just want it to be cool. They just That's want it to be cool. But, want. like, you think I think about when slow motion is used in, like, people being shot. It's usually to yes. emphasize some dramatic, like, a major character will die with yes. a slow motion gunshot or something. Here it's just like, I guess this is the scene where we could put it in. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we, we had to put it in somewhere, uh, I guess, here. Yeah, because I mean, I'm Why more not? used to the opposite, which is where you see the shell casing hit the ground in movies. Mm, That's yes. usually where you see it and, and can be effective. Here, yes. this looks like shit. This is as bad as, do you remember the CGI bullet at the beginning of Die Another Day? Yes. When they did the gun barrel scene it. and they put in the bullet coming at the camera. Ugh, that I remember God. even at the time going, oh, no. Oh, no. Uh-oh. No, just, you don't need that. And you and need little that. that I know would be indicative of that movie's uh, very poor obsession with CGI. Yeah. Yeah, that was the one where they went a bridge too far. Uh, yes. So uh, <laughs> my favorite comment about that movie, Roger Moore said, it's a bit silly, and that's coming <laughs> from the Bond who went to space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Roger Moore. Um, yeah. So, uh, so they shoot these cops. Uh, John Cena goes to run into action, but one of the other guys is in the convenience store and clocks him with a fire extinguisher to the face. Yes. First of many times that John Cena is, is knocked unconscious by blunt force trauma to the head. Yeah. That should, in this case, uh, definitely break every bone in his face and probably crack yes. his skull open. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's the other one that gets me is the sledgehammer later. Uh, well, where you're just this, like that'd be the well, end of it. This movie's PG thirteen, which is important. That's a big problem with it. I think. Yes, they really yes. have to hide violence. This movie wants so badly to be rated R. Yes, but it's but it's, it's just not WWE. I'm sure is mandating that it has to be PG thirteen to reach all of the. Uh, <laughs> no the teen boy, you know, market. That that's they, the thing. It's like it's like twelve to fifteen year old boys and forty five to sixty year old men. That's their that yes. those are their sweet spots, right? That's their demographic. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's that's what they're going for. So yeah, they do want the PG thirteen. Um, mm-hmm. Not that this movie did super well though, um, right? Uh, because although they'll put out a couple more in theaters before they just give up on theatrical distribution. And then I think mm-hmm. when they go to straight to DVD, they go R rated or just unrated. Yeah. There is, okay. a, there is apparently a more graphic cut of this movie referred to as the extreme cut. Oh shit. We should have watched that one. Yeah. Though. I don't, I think we, I think we would have had to buy the actual physical disc of it. Oh, no, that. thanks. Never mind. <laughs> No, I don't no, really no. want to give WWE money. No, 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 no. Did you end up renting this, or was this somewhere to watch? I, I did have to rent this, oh, yeah, on Amazon, yeah. unfortunately. I but. was able to watch it on Stars because I still have my parents' login. Like a good millennial, I just steal my parents' cable like nobody's business. Yep. <laughs> but no, I don't know. For a couple extra shots of blood that we need to, like, although I'm pretty sure we can get it for, like, a buck fifty on Blu-ray, you know? That's true. A used yeah. copy, but still, uh, probably not worth it. Uh, you know what is yeah. worth it? The unrated cut of The Wolverine, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, two yeah. cuts I recommend, The Wolverine and Live Free or Die Hard. You need those extended cuts. They actually make yes. a difference because uh, yes. those are movies that should be rated R. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, they then <laughs> they kidnap John Cena's wife because we might need a hostage. I guess. I mean, even the way Rob so Patrick lazy. is like, I guess we might need a... I don't know. They, uh, they, could, they could not give a fuck no. about this script when they're writing it. They're like, I don't know, whatever. I mean, a good example of that is always when somebody says something important while like running mid-scene, just like, we probably need a hostage. <laughs> and you're just like, yes. what? All right. Uh, it, do- it doesn't matter. They grab her, and then they shoot the gas pumps as <laughs> John Cena's running out. Which causes this is the most insane yes. fire. How, why does this fire not touch him? I don't know. 
because they he should have he should be burnt like all the way. Yeah, he would just be he, there'd be nothing. He'd be a charred skeleton. Yes, he would be Robert Patrick at the end of this movie, which actually is one of the only things I like. That was pretty gnarly makeup. Yeah, it was. It was weirdly paced. Um, but, weirdly you know. paced. It, I agree, but I'm like, ooh, that's actually you got pretty far for a PG-13 on that one. Yeah, for how yes. how burned he is. Not as cool yeah. as um, well, if you, Mission Impossible Fallout has a better uh, disfigured villain fight at the end. But hmm. no surprise, those are the best action movies being made. I think so. Yeah, uh, that movie fucking rules. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I always talk about Fallout because I think it's maybe the best action movie ever. Um, yeah. But uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. So he gets blown through for some reason. Once again, the fire. It's like there's protective shields around these characters. So the force yes. of the explosion is throwing him back through the convenience store. But the mm-hmm. fire is ever just. Uh, you know, a foot off of him. It's so weird. And it's so, it's so actively silly. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's Every a, time. It's a cartoon. And I remember this was another thing in the trailer where we were just like, wait, what? And not only is he not burned, he then just gets up from this so he can get in this cop car and pursue them. Yeah. Now this is another moment because they're shooting at him. And I think this is a, this is a halfway decent car chase. Yeah. Once again, they've got yeah. some money. And this yes. actually is one of the one of the few things I think pretty good movie when they're shooting at him and he puts the bulletproof vest up over his face. Yes, pretty I good. I don't know if that would work, but I like the logic of it from a movie standpoint. Yeah, you'd probably want more of like the shield that cops carry mm-hmm. than the bulletproof yeah. vest. But by action movie logic, pretty good. Yes, and I ha- I don't yeah, I, I can't think that. of another time I've seen it. So yeah, I'm exactly. Going, well, all right. Uh, yeah, then they yeah. but. The problem is, then this scene keeps going, and then they're just mm-hmm. shooting and not hitting him at a certain point. And so I'm going like... They're okay. actively not hitting him. Like, they they're sh- choosing not to. They shoot this car to pieces, man. At least, oh, what do you think? Like, maybe four dozen times or close to yeah. maybe like, what, like a... Uh... I mean, 75 t- I think there's 75 bullet holes in the front of the I, car. I'd say that's pretty fair, yeah. At least. At, at least. At least. I mean, it is just riddled, and the, the yeah. roof is off, the hood is off. Like I like that the car's still driving, too, which is very <laughs> The funny. engine and function of the car is never affected by the nope. barrage of bullets it takes. Well, it is a really nice car, John. So, so really, maybe it yeah. was... <laughs> it's very It's a high-end great. automobile. <laughs> yeah. Uh... And they're just like, and then of course this is where you get what is this guy, the Terminator, and the look from Patrick of like, mm? as if to go, I was the Terminator. Wait a minute, hold on. But also it's one of those things where it's like, hey, don't tell me about other much better movies. <laughs> also, that implies that the movie, the Terminator, exists in this world. Yeah, which oh. then is like, so does Robert Patrick just look like the villain from? Like, he just looks like Robert Patrick. Or, well, now we're or, getting into Ocean's 12 territory where they broke movies. Right, exactly. Yeah, that broke every movie. That destroyed film. Yeah, it destroyed film. <laughs> I'm surprised movies are still I remember made. that was another moment sitting in a theater going, yes. uh, you, you can't do this. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> like, this that's is, not, this... that doesn't make any well, sense. Well, because the, the descendant, the descent of that is, well, if she looks like Julia Roberts, then doesn't Danny Ocean look like George Clooney? And doesn't that right. guy look like Brad Pitt? And that guy look like Matt yeah. Damon? And like, yeah, <laughs> that's so weird. But then Bruce Willis and, shows up and he's the real Bruce Willis. Oh, it's so weird. That movie. That movie. Just yeesh. watch Ocean's Eleven and stop. Ocean's yeah, Eleven is great. It is. Yeah, it's then great. Stop. Yeah. I heard the, um, what, what, what is it? The most recent one. Was oh, Ocean's so 8 is good. Ocean 8. Yeah, I heard that was pretty good. Ocean's 8 Ocean's eight is good. The only thing I'll say about it is it does not matter that it's connected to the Ocean's things. That's right. just, It's a so, good heist movie, though. I do right. really like that one. But now, yeah. do you see now they're doing a prequel that's the origin of Danny Ocean? And you're like, I don't oh, want that. No, I don't understand this. It's the same thing. It. I don't like care. I said Ocean's 8 is one of those things where like, couldn't this movie have just been made and have her not be Danny Ocean's sister? Does it matter? Like, is anyone oh, is that, that? That's the connection. That's the thing is is Sandra Bullock is George Clooney's sister, who's also a thief. Sure. And you're just going like, I mean, that's fine. It's loose enough that it doesn't matter. But it's also like, it doesn't matter. So just, guys, just make movies. I'm, this is the, Just make an original movie. Here we are, here I am going. I mean, but the Marine movies are kind of this too, where it's like, just, just make a thing. 
It doesn't yeah. have to be. I don't just know make what the thing. Yeah, I don't just make the. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> they are making. No, the thing... a, they are making a new Snake Plissken movie with Kurt Russell, though. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can get on board with that. But yeah, don't don't that, fuck yeah. with the thing anymore. I mean, I they made that. I, I would want. Car- I would want carpenter to be involved if they if they're yeah. making another escape movie but you know what i don't know i don't what? know if he is but yeah uh, i doubt it because he's not really making movies anymore no so. but he like consulted on those most recent halloween movies in like a loose oh, story okay. way so he might i mean i would at least want him to have some notes and carpenter yeah. does say the that uh that video game that was out several years ago he considers canon so yeah the the thing uh, the video, video game. game yeah he's, yeah. he's like yes. he's like yeah that's the sequel Cool. Yeah. So I never played it. I did. It's, it's not... good. Uh, oh yeah. It was yeah, because that was early. I played it on. Like... I played it on an original Xbox. So yeah, okay. Yeah. That. That's yeah. It was PS2 Xbox. PS2 era. Xbox. Yeah. Yeah. I really liked it. It is. It yeah. is good. It does feel like the movie. Anyway, that we're not. We're completely off topic now. <laughs> uh, but I, look, look. As soon as John Carpenter comes up, I'm like, well, I'll just talk yeah. about John Carpenter then, because uh, he's a genius. Um, yeah, and I have I, a, I, have I a, love th- him so much. I have a thing painting in here too. So um, that's I true. Fucking love that movie. One of my favorite movies yeah. of all time. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll do more Carpenter comp. We'll do at least we another Carpenter comp. Must we have to do Escape? Escape. We from have New to York. do some. Yeah, we, we have to. We might just let us know, folks. But if you want to see us do one month, just Escape from New York and Escape from L.A., we'd be down for that. Yeah, yeah. I love both those movies. So, um, oh, yeah. Uh, all right. So he's in, he's in pursuit. This ends. Oh, this made me laugh. I laugh so hard at this when he, he, Cena's car goes off. I don't even understand the physics of how this happens, but oh, he, neither do the filmmakers. He, 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 for some reason, the cop car glances off the hood of Robert Patrick's Cadillac and turns yeah. in the air. Uh, mm-hmm. And then they keep shooting the bottom of the car as it goes Still over shooting them. shooting it. Mm-hmm. So fucking funny. So uh, it explodes. The car, John Cena, I guess, jumps he, out of the car. We see it. The car, because the roof has been taken off, the car is turned yeah. upside down. And Cena leaps out what would be the roof, but is now the bottom of the car, as it explodes and falls into this <laughs> lake or ravine or whatever. And they don't see... Oh, they do see him jump out, but they don't see him. They don't surface, see him surface, which because means he, that he dies. Yeah, but he because but listen, he's a marine, so he can hold his breath. See, God. <laughs> I I keep forgetting he's a marine, John. Well, I don't how, know why? How could you? They say he's a marine <laughs> eight hundred times. <laughs> I don't because there's isn't there some line too where it's like who is this guy and Robert Patrick goes he's a marine. Yeah, that sounds right. Can I also say that a better decision would have been to also have Robert Patrick be a marine? Yes, so that there's some sort of like uh, they don't they yeah. don't have to have known each other, but they just have no. equal skill. Or he he yeah. recognizes tactics or something. He's a marine like me or whatever. Well, they don't want they don't want the villains to be an actual threat because if they did, they wouldn't give them like three stooges level of comedy that bits. that's an interesting point only but only patrick is presented as kind of badass as, right yes i guess that's true and he because of his performance he is menacing yes robert patrick does ca- and robert patrick has played many uh general many, marine yeah. kind of guy he's yeah. got that vibe about him I think he's yeah. an ex-military guy on Peacemaker, even. Um, oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's also, I won't, once again, you should watch it. Other people should watch it. I won't spoil it, but he is maybe also secretly uh, a costume supervillain, um, oh. which is pretty oh. cool. Yeah, yeah. He he might put on an outfit, too. Um, he might. All right. Hey, man, All right. sooner, as I always say with those things, sooner or later, everybody's in a fucking costume. That's how comic yeah. books work. <laughs> yeah. Uh by the way, that, now that now that I read that, since I read that this morning, I can't stop thinking about all these scenes though with Pacino. <laughs> Guys, a marine. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. All the sexy stuff with the female henchwoman too. Could you imagine Pacino is being straddled by this woman while he's driving? I'm trying to drive here, sweetheart. <laughs> hey, I gotta keep my eyes on the road. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I would do it, honey, if I could still get it up. Uh. <laughs> 
also that's the other thing is Pacino's at least fifteen years older than Robert Patrick, right? If not, right. And Robert Patrick is quite a bit older than this woman. Yeah. Um, so, so that's what I'm yeah, saying. It's like Pacino, <laughs> Pacino would have been like sixty five in this movie. <laughs> oh yeah, it's time for the oh. big score. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I just, I, I mean, it would have been fun, but he, it would have, this would have come out. We would have been like, Jesus, Pacino, what are you doing? Yeah. Can yeah, you, we would have felt once again, really it's, it's one of those, Pacino. like, can you have an Oscar taken back? Is that possible? <laughs> no, I swear. John, I'll be in something good again. And he was. Yeah, uh, no, no. Pacino's doing great now. Actually, there's been yeah. a lot of good Pacino stuff recently. Um, we have we, righteous kill. <laughs> we are we do want to do righteous kill. I think we I think we've talked about doing a Pacino De Niro month. Yeah, we could do we that. We could do we could that do like good. a Pacino movie, a De Niro movie, and then the two of them. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that might be something. And then for the, the for the patron stuff, we could just watch Heat. Yeah, know? which is you know yeah. a masterpiece. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Well, that would also be sad because the 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 thefts, the thieves, you know, thieves in this movie are so terrible. If Pacino was in this being in, which may be the best bank robbery movie ever. Like. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they just assume John Cena is dead, but now their car is wrecked, which starts the slog section of this movie, which is them wandering Ooh. through the woods. This stuff is awful. It's bad. It's not good. And we do we it's... get the insane, as I wrote here, insane black man rant yes yeah and then uh, it leads to everyone pulling guns they're also <laughs> this is another reason why they're a bad thieving team they're constantly turning on each other and pulling guns yes and robert patrick is actively encouraging uh unhinged behavior he's like yeah. i love a good unhinged henchman you never know what they're <laughs> capable of I'm like, i love that well, that's, line that's bad I'm like, I'm that's like, a yeah, bad thing. no, that, that's like a screenwriter talking. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, yeah. We're going like, yeah, we want to keep the crazy guy around because he's interesting. Th yeah. th that's not what you want on a team. You want like cold professionalism. Yes. Once again, going back to Heat, they have, if you remember at the beginning of that movie, there is a crazy guy on the team and De Niro tells him to never work with them ever again. And then yes. later we'll kill that guy because he's a psycho. So. Yeah. Yeah, you uh th that that's that's bad. You want like the guys I, in control. I assumed when when this guy killed the cop. Yeah. at the gas station. I assumed Robert Patrick was going to shoot him. Yeah, he, that's the logical thing to do. Yeah, cuz he created the situation. No. No. And I just no, he's like I like this guy. And that's a, and now that they're trudging through the woods, I'm going like, well, "Where are they going?" Cuz there's some loose know. thing about we got to get to Phoenix to fence these diamonds and there's a guy he keeps talking to on the phone but none of it really matters no no so like where yeah so they're walking to phoenix from south carolina they're, they're walking to an airport they're gonna fly eventually they're gonna they're oh, okay. okay well they end up doing is they end up walking to that that cabin or whatever that that they take refuge in where they yes. have the fridge full of miller genuine draft the right. champagne of beers uh mm. <laughs> I'm drinking Miller right now. Uh, I'm drinking that Miller. I, <laughs> uh, I, you know what? You know what? I only drink Miller out of champagne glasses, out of respect. <laughs> <laughs> respect. Mm. Yeah. I would love to. I would love to throw a party where they have like the platter of champagne glasses. Oh, Not tell anyone, but God, they're full of Miller. So funny. <laughs> that's a, that's actually a very funny bit that I might consider doing. Um, that sounds. That sounds like something. Uh, like no, that's a joke that will go in something we write. Well, it is the <laughs> champagne of beers. <laughs> so therefore, what is this? Oh, this isn't. God. This tastes like shitty beer. <laughs> no, it's Miller, the champagne no, of beers. It's the champagne of beer. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't afford actual champagne. <laughs> but it's but it's beautifully set up in the layered you know glasses yes. like at a fancy oh, bar. Yes. Yeah. I would love so, waiters and tuxes with the trays. <laughs> Miller, sir. <laughs> um, I believe it's Miller time. It's just Alfred from Batman going, I believe it's Miller time, Master Wayne. <laughs> uh, exactly. 
So he says, oh, nobody God. kills anyone till till I give the go ahead. And then he shoots this one guy in the head. And yeah. and the black guy goes, what was that? And and the other guy goes, the go ahead. <laughs> it's Manu Bennett because he, I guess he's here because he's Australian in this movie. He's shot in Australia. So he's probably right. a local hire. He just happened to be around. Yeah. And like I said, he's actually a good actor. Not that there's any time for him to, he's not bad in the nope. movie. He's just the guy. I think they just hired him because he's like a big guy. Yeah, yeah, he's wasted. He's just, once again, if you see his work as Deathstroke, really good. Uh, yeah. Okay, the weird... Uh, okay, not the weirdest scene. Because we already yes. talked about the weirdest scene. Second weirdest the scene? Second weirdest When scene. Robert Patrick hits on John Cena's wife. Yeah, uh, yes. And he goes, yeah. you know, I was thinking maybe you and I can... And he does this like, uh, 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 I, you know, I, I, we, we could, we could get together, but you know, and he starts like, like po- directing his head at his girlfriend. Yeah. The old ball and chain. And, and the worst part about this scene is that the wife is not understanding yeah. what he's doing. What you, and yeah. so it just keeps going. This is, or this is a least... prime example of a comedy beat in a movie <laughs> Made by people who don't know comedy at all. Who don't understand comedy, <laughs> yes. Uh, and I just... They are, John, and Robert Patrick is really trying to sell this joke. Because Robert it, Patrick can be funny and has been funny in things. Yeah. Um, but this is, this, is a, this is such a perfect example of everything wrong with this movie like it's the worst parts of this movie awful and and and, and it, i'm like oh it's my maybe God. a 30 second scene but it feels like it goes on for at least no, 12 minutes i agree the whole time so i'm going like why why is he still is doing he, that he's still going he's still going uh and i do like i will say it, actually kelly carlson once again pretty good where she's just like why what? would you think that would happen like <laughs> what's wrong with no you? it's a, it's a legitimate it's she has a, oh oh she has a oh, very I understand. You're real, crazy. Okay. She has a very real reaction to that of like, yes. of course not. And he's like, ah, well, all right. Her expression during the scene was also my expression watching this scene. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like, what? Just like confused. Like, yeah. It was very strange. Uh, then what? this is where John Cena gets clubbed in the head with a two by four by a couple of backwoods, like meth makers. They have like some lab equipment. In yeah, this. and they have drugs or something, Drug, but it's yeah. not clear. It or also moon, doesn't moonshiners, matter. maybe. It's I don't know. I don't. I thought know. I remember them packing drugs into like. Oh, they might have. They I yeah. Once again, they're just vague like backwoods baddies. It really doesn't matter. And they're just here so that John Cena can hit a couple more guys. He does do an insane flying spin kick in this. Yes, which is great. That was that was solid, man. I enjoyed yeah. that. I mean, once again, yes. see, I mean, they talked about this on Suicide Squad. It was a gift to have him because the guy mm-hmm. understands how to sell. He's made a living fake fighting. So yes. you're talking about the man 100% knows how to make a fight look good. So the yes. couple moments when he hits guys do look good in this movie. Yeah. I, I mean, true. it's the one thing I would expect to work in a WWE movie, to be fair. Right. Uh, right. Exactly. Is, yeah. It's the only thing I would expect to work. Yeah. I mean, Gunn kind of talked about that he just sort of let Cena handle a lot of the fight stuff in Suicide Squad going, he's going to know how to do it, and he's going to know how to do it without hurting people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. That's important. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about when he fights Vin Diesel in Fast and the Furious because Vin Diesel – can't lose of course mm, right you're never gonna land a hit on me <laughs> that's not allowed yeah uh-uh he i told yeah. you he not only does he not lose fight he does have people keep count of how many times he gets hit to make sure he hits the other guy more Jesus <laughs> I, he I needs to also I, land more punches i can't understand like that kind of ego you're actively <laughs> making the movie worse yeah by doing that you yeah. know what i mean like those movies are are, are great but like yeah. that is that is actively making them no yeah, like yeah, yeah, they yeah, could yeah. be more exciting that, that's it exactly it's not that it's not that he's making the movies bad but he is they could be slightly more interesting or something like that yes the, the only there's the There's only time a level of tension they're removing. By the, not only ta- him the only time, the only times he's ever heard in those movies is by things like he's on a bridge that collapses or something. You know right. what I mean? Like that. Exactly. That's the kind of thing. Because in every movie, there's also a scene 
where you think he's dead. Okay. And then he comes back to life. He <laughs> okay. is resurrected like in Like Jesus. Every... Well, because you've heard him talk about that, right? No, I haven't. Dominic Toretto was a Christ figure. <laughs> oh, yeah. He 100% no. says he's... And my family are the apostles. <laughs> uh... Yeah. Well, Justin Lin, the most beloved director of the Fast and the Furious franchise, basically got yeah. the job because he says... I kind of see Dominic Toretto as a Jesus figure. And Vin's like, I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you're, exact, you're exactly right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, uh, we're going to be doing something with the Fast and the Furious movies soon that we'll announce. But yeah. We're not on it yet. but Because I know you really haven't seen them, and that's a shame. I've seen just the first one. Wow. I, that, that's, I mean, which is good, but it's nowhere near where that it's... franchise goes. It, yeah, I oh, e yeah. space. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I always, I always talk about. It. I want, I want somebody to watch the first movie and like the ninth movie and yes. just go. Wait, how is this the same thing? Because <laughs> as somebody, franchise. as somebody who's followed all the movies, it feels like a totally natural. Of course, it's you're right. It, it, every movie is just a little bit more ridiculous. It just keeps pushing the, the edge one. and pushing the edge. Yeah, exactly. uh, Mike Gergoni's theory is that they have to eventually get to time travel, right? Like they, I they, believe that's true. Yeah, yeah. I, and they, we do want, must. we do want, um, we specifically want Vin Diesel driving a pirate ship. Yeah, it's either time travel or a multiverse thing. Well, where they have to fight the evil. Uh, yeah, Mirror Universe Vin Diesel. Um, and that's the only person who could possibly beat Do- Dominic Toretto because it is also Dominic Toretto. There is a movie that kind of does that. Uh, oh, okay. Not, not, not a little Mirror Universe, but there, it, it, we'll get into those at some point. We'll uh, get to it, yeah. So, uh, he beats those guys up. He tackles them. There's a lot of Cena tackling people in this movie. There's also yes. a lot of Cena exploding through walls in this movie, which I love. He does do that a lot, yes. It's, 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 but it's kind of what we're talking about, where this movie doesn't take advantage of how likable John Cena is. It's just playing to he's a big guy, so he can explode through a wall. Yes, but like, it's like the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I heard it well, It came down to John Cena or the Kool-Aid man for this role. <laughs> oh, man. It Can you damn imagine? Close. It was the damn... Kool-Aid man and... <laughs> and Al Pacino? <laughs> yeah, I could Oh, no. It. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Who is that guy? He's a pitcher of Kool-Aid. Uh <laughs> Here's the thing. Okay, uh, also not being a, a drug person, uh, but I, I, I did see a tweet that made me feel high, and it was, what is the Kool-Aid man? Is he the pitcher or is he the liquid? That's a great question. And I yes. am going like, whoa, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We, we, The world may never know, John. I mean, I think Family Guy posited that if you break it open, like the liquids is blood and you'll die. Yes, yes. I think that was their theory, which is good. I, th- I think that's kind of where I... Like, I he, he, he's, a, he's a, a sentient pitcher, but he needs the liquid to be alive. Exactly, yeah. yes. Guys, yes. we've solved it. <laughs> we've solved it. Mystery over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cena does have a cool knife that he doesn't do enough with, and that's partially due to this pg-13 because there's the scene yes. when he gets the drop on dozer and he goes to slash at him and they yes. do this thing that can be cool where he goes and he slashes with the knife and then it cuts to them popping open a miller genuine draft except <laughs> that doesn't track for me why well i, I guess it does is the implication that it's 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 the equivalent of his head coming off because the I action is going, the action is going across and then up, though. Yeah, like it's not a perfect yeah, that's thing. True. That's the thing. Usually, it's a, it's like a fluidity of continuation of emotion. Or that's of, true. Of emotion, yeah, not emotion. I, I thought this was, and maybe just compared to the rest of the movie, this feels very slick. Yeah, know, no, I, I mean, of, I think, a, I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's good, but it just. But it, I was yeah, slightly I, confused. I do see what you mean. Yeah, because like. It is, I'm trying yeah. to think of other movies that do this. Like, you might have somebody bring a hammer down on somebody, and then it cuts mm-hmm. like somebody tenderizing meat or something like that. Or exactly, yeah. you know, that kind of thing, right? In this yes. case, it's two separate, different actions. Yes, now, one could true. look at if if the if the implication is 
<laughs> this is the most anyone's ever thought about this movie. <laughs> if the implication is that he's taken the guy's head off and the foam coming out of the beer is the guy's blood. I guess. That's what I have to take. But I, I don't Either know way, how, with a knife, you would take somebody's head off. Even a knife off. this big, you wouldn't. No. Yeah. He, he cut his yeah. throat open. Although, of course, open, when yeah. we see that guy's body later, there is no blood whatsoever. No blood. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he could have taken his head most of the way off with that knife, probably. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's a long knife. I just like I, he would. I wouldn't. It wouldn't have been a full decapitation. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> I would love if he cut back out and he's just sawing his head all the way off, <laughs> like a sicko. <laughs> That's the X-rated. That's the uh, R-rated. Ah, ah, come on, I want this head. <laughs> He's like he's stuck on the spine. Yeah. And he's like, God damn it! it. Ah. <laughs> they told me this knife could cut through anything when I bought it. <laughs> and like one of the other henchmen comes up. He's, like, what the fuck? It's like truly. <laughs> I horrible. will say these guys would probably give up at that point. <laughs> it's like Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, just the front of him is covered with <laughs> Dozer's blood. <laughs> He's like he's <laughs> wide-eyed and seething. <laughs> you know what? This isn't worth it, man. No amount of diamonds is worth this. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I mean, that's like predator shit, right? Where you're leaving, yeah. you're leaving the skull and spine out and stuff like that. Yep. My God. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> anyways uh, so he goes he goes to fight uh he goes to fight um uh the other guy manu bennett he goes to fight deathstroke and he mm-hmm. kills him with a body slam like a pile driver i guess so well because he, he he grabs him by the neck and slams him to the ground then he sort of does like a knee drop on him and 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 he's dead oh yes yes apparently it's a that, very wwe kill it, it is very wwe yeah you see stuff like that like i think uh enter the dragon has a similar thing like bruce yeah. lee kills somebody that way yeah uh, except it was cooler because it was bruce lee obviously yes and it was <laughs> yeah yes and of the uh, Dragon, one, once again, one of the greatest action movies ever. So Yes, yes. Uh, so, it's, I guess, yeah, he steps on him to death or something. Yeah. I don't know. And once again, without the R rating, it's another thing, too. You go, like, you don't really feel the impact. Not that that would be gory, necessarily, but I want to hear no. some snapping or something in ex- that situation. Ex- the sound is, is what's important. Because that there. is something they talk about. You, do you know you have to control the volume of gunshots in a PG-13? I didn't know that, but that makes sense. There is, there are actual, uh, the, the, I will say the commentary for Live For Your Die Hard is very fascinating because it's him talking about all the stuff they had to change. Because mm. that was a case where they made an R rated movie. Right. And, then and they, they had made to them edit cut it, it to a PG 13, which that is, sucks. and the R rated version is so much better when you actually see yeah. it because that's an R rated franchise. Uh, <laughs> same thing with Expendables 3. Same thing happened. Oh whoa! Yeah, is, but there is a unrated yeah. version. That's okay, the version cool, I have, cool. which is gotcha. the one that you need to watch. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, but the 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 thing about it, they talk about it's stupid stuff. Like we had to lower the volume of the guns, and they had to cut out scenes of just bullets going through cement and wall. Even like that was considered an act of violence, even though it wasn't hitting somebody. It was considered That's... violent anyway. I mean, yeah, because it's a gun. <laughs> like it's a guns are violent what sort of a thing where with the mpa where i'm always just going you know what just say you can't have guns or something like you know what i mean like it just seems right. like I, I would actually respect them more if they were harsher it's the weird intricacies of stuff yes that, it just feels like they're making shit up it's on the, the spot. and there's one in this it's the one you get one fuck how about i would respect the more if it was just like no none you can't put any in a piece yes. great then yeah. I understand that rule. Why does one? Right. And some movies do two, and they can argue for it somehow. Right, exactly. Stupid. Or like the nudity thing. Like, yeah. It, 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 there can be nudity. It just has to be brief. Yeah. It's like, okay, but like, how brief are we yeah. talking? Or a butt. You can show a butt, but not a breast. Sh- right, exactly. What? Or you can show a breast. But yeah, uh, you can show one it breast be and a, br- it's, a brief breast. If you yeah, know. and it's from the side and whatever. You know, you're like, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. It just sort of you get into weird intricacies. Highly recommend the documentary. This film is not yet rated. Yes. Fascinating. Yes. All about how the NBA it, works. 
it's or doesn't work I yeah suppose. yeah how uh, it <laughs> supposedly functions uh yeah uh, it's also infuriating uh yes okay. it is so detective van buren arrives he's crooked uh -huh. no one's surprised no uh we gotta have the the they do give cena's wife a brief fight with the henchwoman yes but she, she doesn't escape she gets taken again yeah Cena does do an action roll into this building here. An unnecessary... For, no re for literally no reason. <laughs> action roll. Uh, this whole movie strikes me as like, Cena's so eager and ready to be in a movie, but the movie yeah. is so beneath what he could do. But it yes. is like, I'm going to roll in. I'm going to do this. Like, you just get the sense this guy's like, oh yeah, I'm ready to be a movie star. And they're like, yeah, but we have a shit movie for you, man. Yeah, he's like, he pitched the role. He's like, yeah, yeah, I can roll in and it'll look cool. Yeah. They're like, shh. Sure, I guess. Um, but of course, the it almost doesn't matter too that the cop is uh, crooked. is crooked because he's just going to get killed immediately here by Patrick, and then it yeah. leads to one of several shootouts in this movie that are literally there's so much sparks and bullets hitting things and everyone shooting mm -hmm. in slow motion and Cena's diving through the air although he hasn't yet done the Cena dive which he's about to do. Yeah. Because as Robert Patrick escapes, he shoots the gas generator on this place, mm -hmm. this wooden shack, and it explodes. But Cena does, I mean, when we talk, it's a dive. It is yes. arms out in front of him, almost like Olympic positioning dive. Yeah, he is fully, <laughs> uh, he's fully perpendicular or pa uh, parallel to, yeah. the, to the water. Like, yeah. he's complete. I mean, he is an arrow. It's damn good form. Air. He's aerodynamic yes. going through the air. Yes. As this building explodes behind him. Uh, yes. And I thought, well, that's pretty silly. Then when he does it again later, I was really, oh, yes. that's just what he does. Uh, <laughs> that's just, it's just the Cena dive. It's the Cena dive. Is this a Marine thing? Do you learn this in Marine school? I don't know. <laughs> But I once just, again, I love the I just love the image of a body that's so bulky trying to be as streamlined as an arrow, you know? Yeah. It is so like Pierce Brosnan can do this shit, but yeah, I don't know about yes. you, Cena. Uh yeah. there he goes though. Uh through the it's like anytime Vin Diesel runs, you're like, mm mm. <laughs> he does he not aerodynamic. No, he lumbers, man. I always thought yeah. he he basically just lowers his head and, and, and this the, the weight of his upper body carries him forward in movies. Yeah. He charges at things. Uh, he only he only runs downhill. <laughs> Here he comes. It's always head first with Vin yes. Diesel. Uh, so uh, I guess it makes sense then that uh, John Cena plays his brother, and they're just two bulky dudes lumbering yeah. around those movies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, and of course, Rob Patrick's like, "Well, that definitely killed him this time." So yeah. off we go again. Then, don't check. We don't need to check. It's we, fine. We really don't need to check. They yeah. kill a truck driver and steal his yep. big rig truck. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I felt so bad for this this uniform cop who just sees John Cena. Is like, yeah, I got to arrest you, man, because shit's exploding and people are dead. And John Cena's like, no time. And he takes this cop down and cuffs him. I'm like, that guy wasn't crooked. That was just a cop. <laughs> just a cop. Yeah. <laughs> But John Cena's like, God damn it, don't you understand, cop? This is marine business. <laughs> they have my wife. And I think I'm John Triton. I think he does say I'm John Triton. And I just want this guy to be like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I don't know or care who that is. That's not a thing. He says it like he says it like you would say, I'm CIA or something like that. He goes, I'm right. John Triton. As this guy would go like, holy shit, John Triton. <laughs> Wait, the John Triton? Well, uh, go go ahead, sir. <laughs> oh. By all means. Yeah, oh my god. Well, John Trident's on the case. Uh, you can have my boat. You can yeah. have my gun. You can have my wife. Well, <laughs> please, please fuck my wife. <laughs> please. I, wa I really want to watch. Uh, please, this, this would go so far to help our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> the John Trident. <laughs> this fall on Cuck Cop. Uh, <laughs> Cuck Cop. <laughs> I'd watch that. No, I wouldn't. Uh, what a horrible show. <laughs> Just like, I arrest people and then make them fuck my wife in front of me. <laughs>
Welcome to Cut Cop. Um, yeah, and he's got uh, what's that? Horns. It's been canceled. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we filmed the pilot. It was so offensive that mm, all the footage the, was <laughs> the lowest testing pilot in TV history. Fascinating. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so he does take this guy's gun and boat. So yes. now we have Patrick and his wife. And his wife. Yeah. Well, honey. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have brought her to work today. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> it was bring your wife to work day. Um, <laughs> uh, I just I just love it. Once again, it's not that he can convince this guy to help him. He just has to be like, no, I'm totally in the right. <laughs> Stuck it, cop. Yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> John Triton is never wrong. That's the point and of also, this movie. And also, there's no repercussions for doing no. that. I mean, well, as as I don't you know, know cuz the movie just stops. This movie it does, does just kind of stop. He he would be immediately arrested oh, like God. as soon as the police show up at he the end of the movie. He has so much to answer for, so much to explain. Yeah. The amount of property damage and I mean, yes. that's true in a lot of these movies, but truly this guy is out of control. Because there is a total of, I think, 17 explosions in this movie. I think it's something like that, yeah. Yeah, I, I was keeping track. But that is, yeah, dude, that sounds right. Uh, yeah. That is, uh, that's a lot. That's it's a lot. a lot of explosions. Considering one explosion is usually a big deal. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. This is just a world I mean, where shit just blows up, though. Uh, when, when we saw the trailer, we're like, "This movie should be called Explosions." The movie, and it, uh, I mean, that it, is what we it, called it. Yeah, it kind of, and it is having watching it like this. It is sort yeah. of like, yeah. I mean, it's it's a, a lot of explosions. It's a lot of explosions, which which is one of the the good points the movie has. It's kind of when things yes. aren't exploding that I'm like, you know, when's something gonna blow up again? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Cena's Cena's now tracking. They're in a semi truck. Cena's in a police boat. Mm-hmm. And so he did, it's a good thing they're driving near the water. He did overhear when he was sneaking around. That like, he did overhear Robert Patrick talk about going to uh, oh, that's true. Uh, 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 some kind of airfield where they were going to take mm-hmm. off to Phoenix. It's a good thing he knows where this airfield is. Yeah, <laughs> luckily, why well, is John Triton? Well, yeah, John yeah. Triton knows where all airfields are. <laughs> It's part of the lore. I'm a Marine, man. Uh, yeah. Once again, you'd think he might... This might be another thing where a good script might have had him convince that cop to help him, and the cop yeah. could know. That'd yes. be something. That's like a diehard thing. John McClane often has people who help him in action situations. Yeah, because he's not a one-man, like, uh, army. No, you know? no. Like in Die Hard 2, he's in the airport, and he goes like, oh, let me talk to this janitor who would know the layout of the... Oh, great. <laughs> And that also helps make John McClane likable because he he has the opportunity to interact with, you know, yeah. regular human yeah. beings who aren't an action, you know, uh, star. No, uh, not in this, man. No, not, not in, not in this. this movie. They no. don't want John Cena to talk to anybody. Well, it's just, it, it does feel like if anybody else does anything, he'll seem weak as they're thinking, right? Exactly, like, he, exactly. He must just always be right, always mm-hmm. be the toughest, Always mm-hmm. do something badass. He knows how to do everything. He doesn't. Yeah. He knows how to drive this boat. He knows how to drive every vehicle. He, yeah. You know, he, which like he fire so, every so does James Bond. But James Bond also has Q and M and Monty Penny and like you know. Yes. He can do a lot of shit, but he does still have help and Felix Leiter. Yes. And you know, <laughs> it is interesting. There is. I can't believe like um, his doughy friend doesn't come back because it does feel like. Because uh, we'll talk about... We're really setting him up, yeah. They're, they're, we'll talk about, uh, um, uh, like, next week's movie, I know The Rock has a sidekick in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, that, that's that's not uncommon for these, for there to be, like, a comedic sidekick or something. Yeah. Although this movie yeah. does not need more comedy in it, by any stretch of imagination. That is true. Yeah. Uh, it is weird, though. They give all the comedy to the bad guys. All of it. Like, is, every oh, single bit of Cena comedy. Cena never says villains. anything funny in this thing. Which no. is, as we're saying, it's a shame because he actually is funny. He's very funny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 I highly recommend people haven't seen Blockers. Really fucking funny in that movie. Mm. Really, mm. really. That's, an, that's just a pure comedy. It's not an action movie at all. It's just a pure comedy oh, okay. with Cena. And he's hilarious in it. Um, so, uh, so yeah. This, this leads us to... When he kills this henchwoman, this is this has got to be the kill of the movie, right? I'm trying to remember. He jumps onto uh, the side of the semi truck 
and he tears this woman out of the cab and throws her into an oncoming bus. Yes, this is the kill of the movie, one hundred percent. And you see, she's carrying the diamonds on her, and you see yes. the the bloody diamonds hit the ground. Like, oh, and also, it was all for not greedy bad guys. Yes, yeah, because they established her like they did a joke about them not trusting each other and it's like what you don't trust me with the diamonds and then they that does yeah pay off because <laughs> he inadvertently not only kills her but get, removes the diamonds from the equation well because the diamonds have no that has nothing to do with john cena right like <laughs> no no he doesn't give a fuck yeah, yeah. uh <laughs> i just thought it's so quick and so brutal and this yes. woman just <laughs> and also they don't show anyone's reaction on the bus, but you're like, the trauma of... Oh, ha- of, my God. <laughs> that I bus driver would never be okay again, right? No. But no, whatever. He would never work again, uh, <laughs> of course. Uh, he might not function oh, anymore. I don't know, man. I was just driving the bus, and then a woman flew in through the windshield. But she had some diamonds. Oh, he kept those diamonds. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. They of were course, yeah. literal blood diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> Leo DiCaprio is like, where'd you get those blood diamonds? Um, where'd you get those blood diamonds? Trying to do his, I think his okay South African accent in that movie. It's 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 perfectly passable. I mean, you DiCaprio know? once again, he does the work. I think he did try on it. You know? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah he's a good actor. <laughs> once he's again, a, he's a good actor. Yeah, yeah. Big hot takes. Leo DiCaprio good at acting. Um, yeah. Who knew? Uh. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Then. <laughs> Then we get, I don't know, 15 minutes, it feels like, of Robert Patrick driving the semi-truck through, like, wooden shacks trying to get Cena off the side of it. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't work, man. It doesn't work. He's still on there. Uh, He's not... John Cena isn't even getting injured. Oh, no. He's not even... He's literally. I mean, he's does basically he ever Luke get? Cage. He gets a little bit injured. He is. He's very much Luke Cage. He yeah. Gets, he gets a tiny bit injured in the final fight, but not really. Yeah, barely. Yeah, which is uh, insane. So finally, uh, Patrick handcuffs the wife, and he's just gonna steer the truck into uh, a building full of flammable barrels. <laughs> this this was in, the fact that she didn't die yep. is crazy. That is legitimate. Well, because like, fire doesn't hurt I, anyone. Right. But, like, the truck is actively exploding mm-hmm. as she's driving through this building. Yeah. Uh, and then she yeah. ends up in the water. So the, the yes. thing crashed in the water. So the water's filling the cab of the truck, and she's trying Oof. not to drown. And I just love, while his wife is drowning, now they're going to have their face off. And, yeah. Okay. I love Robert Patrick. But he loses this fight instantly in reality, right? 100%. Against yeah. Well, I thought the same thing earlier. When those guys in the building, that douchebag and his friends, I'm like, guys, mm-hmm. look at him. He, right. <laughs> you don't Why even you need to know a he's a Marine. Guy? There's no reason to do this. And that man is a human wrecking ball. Yeah. I yes. never understood. That's always the thing in these movies where, like, somebody goes up to Arnold in some movie and goes, Hey, pal, take a hike. And you're like, You would never. Not in a million no. years. <laughs> no. It's all, it, the Terminator movies always do that, where some tough guy's like, Fuck you, buddy. You know? And even if you don't know he's a robot, he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's huge. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't understand. But, but, uh, but we, this scene's pretty wild. Uh, cause this is where, uh, this should put him down for the count is this sledgehammer to the ribs. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I can't All even, of his ribs are broken. The, 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 just that'd be instant. You'd be over. He just gets up and keeps fighting. Fine. I also love that for some reason, this movie's function like video game logic where yes. like once he hits him with the sledgehammer, the sledgehammer is now useless and Patrick doesn't pick it up again. Yeah, because there's a durability bar, you know. Like, That's what so, I'm, yeah, it does feel like yeah. that, where it, now it broke and he's got to put it yeah. down. Because then he goes and grabs a chainsaw that uh, Cena picks up like a piece of rebar to block the chainsaw. Now, yes. I love chainsaw battles. Of course. <laughs> uh, have you seen the Nicolas Cage movie Mandy? I, I have not, no. Uh, there is a scene where Nicolas Cage duels a guy and they they both have chainsaws and they're fighting with chainsaws like swords. 
That sounds great. Uh, it's one of my favorite scenes in anything ever. And they're just hitting yeah. and sparking. Uh, yeah. And that that scene is awesome. Like the shotgun, it is an inherently cinematic mm-hmm. uh, object that would never be used in an actual fight. No, it's it's so unwieldy. You you yeah. have such likelihood of it coming back on you, too. Yes, exactly. It's but really, it looks really cool. It looks cool. It has a cool sound. It can hit stuff and spark. Seriously, yeah. by the way, you should watch Mandy in general. It's amazing. But um, yeah, but that's <laughs> so awesome. They do sell a statue of it that I've almost bought a couple times, which is Cage. But he also has a sick axe in that movie. That movie just rules. Um, uh, anyway, yeah. But I was also disappointed Patrick didn't get the. Ch- I don't think Patrick's death is very interesting. No, the not the, at all. the girl getting thrown on the bus is way more interesting. Yes, um, because again. Another example of not giving the main villain the coolest death. He should have the biggest... Cr- I thought Cena should get the... But once again, they can't do anything with the chainsaw because we're in PG-13, so you'd have to true. apply it. Well, because they do the thing where the, the roof just collapses with all the exploding barrels, and that yes. results in yet another dive. <laughs> and seemingly, Robert Patrick is blown up, and I went, well, that's pretty lame. Yeah, and then they bring it back. And go, okay, well, so because he dives into the water and Cena saves mm-hmm. his wife, but then yeah. uh oh, Robert burned up Robert Patrick, which I do He's like alive I, for five seconds. I do like a scorched villain. I love um, I I bring up Wrath of Khan a lot, uh, but that has the thing where the ship is blown up and Khan has the scarred up, torched mm. face at the end that I love. Um. Uh, this also reminds me of the henchman coming back at the end of Die Hard. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah that's Carl. kind of like the same energy. But the problem is that they did that to have a character arc for, <laughs> for Al. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Reginald so Bill Johnson why, getting Why have him. that in this movie? I don't know. It it's, just felt really weird and jarring. Yeah. He should have been burned earlier, and that should have been longer part of the fight or something like the that. The whole fight, he should have looked like that. Yeah. yeah if that if he had been, been awesome. burned when he jumped out of the truck or something like that, that would have been, yeah. Yeah. Once again, Mission Impossible Fallout. They do that. The guy's scarred for the whole fight. Yeah. Or like uh, Tucker and Dale versus Eve. Oh, yeah. what a crazy movie that is. Talk about some good yeah. chainsaw work. Uh, yeah. Uh, that movie's awesome. Um, yeah. But... Uh, but yeah, and it's just she gets the chain around Cena, and then Cena just kind of unwraps it around his neck, puts it around Patrick's, and then snaps his neck. Yes, boring. Yeah, so and, boring. And it's it's boring, and it's very quick, and it doesn't matter. And then the movie. Ends. And you can do a good neck snapping. See Air Force One, Gary Oldman's death in that movie. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. He gets the thing wrap. Harrison Ford punches him. Then it snaps his neck, and then. You do the thing where he's floating down the parachute with his dead bot, and you're like, yeah, yeah. that's how it's done. Get off my plane. I, and, yeah, and he gets a <laughs> Cena doesn't even say anything. Harrison Ford also no. gets a sick one-liner. Like, <laughs> maybe a top five action movie one-liner? They, Get they off my really plane? Get, they really don't want to give Cena anything. Like, no. anything at all. And so then he turns to his wife and goes, we should have gone to the beach. And the movie ends. And the movie ends. <laughs> he still doesn't know what he wants to do with himself. He no. doesn't know what job. No. Like, none of that. His character doesn't matter. I, I, uh, I don't think movies should overstay their welcome, but I do think movies should have endings. <laughs> they should end, you know. They like, should. there's no... Because, like, you think about the end of Die Hard goes to, like, oh, like, the ambulances are here and stuff like that. They don't do that in this. It's just... Nope. Eh. Nope. Nope. I don't know. No, I prefer the ending of Invasion USA. <laughs> that movie really cuts off. It really... Well, because that movie's like... That movie is doing what I kind of wish this movie... I wish this movie had taken the Invasion USA and just gone, we'll cut out anything even remotely resembling character work. Cut out <laughs> everything that isn't guns firing or explosions happening. That's the Gorman Globus way, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> ah, well, that's the Marine. We named the yeah. best kill. I feel like it's the only one that's even on the table, man, really. I think so. Girl yeah. thrown into bus, and also I went, oh, oh, that was unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> we love an unnecessarily brutal kill. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, let's talk. We got some real lame one-liners here, man. Some real lame ones. Yeah, let's let's get here. We these, go. Yeah. Uh, we have at the beginning when they're surrounded by bad guys and one of the Marines says, how do we get around them? And John Cena says, we don't. 
<laughs> I'm yawning. <laughs> That's way. a good reaction. Uh, when the guy says, you need to punch me to make it look real, and Robert Patrick shoots him in the head, he says, that's real. Uh, oh, we didn't talk about this one, but it's it's when they keep shooting at... Uh, he says, shoot that guy! And uh, and the, the henchman says, what does it look like we're doing? And Robert Patrick says, missing. Which is true. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, nobody kills anyone until I say the go-ahead, and then he shoots the guy, and the one guy asks, what was that? And the other guy says, the go-ahead. That one, yeah. And then finally, we have we should have gone to the beach. I think it's the missing one. I I agree. I think I that's that's the agree. only one that's even worth mentioning. So yes. there you go. It's lame. That's the last we'll ever hear of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a year from now we will not be talking about that one. Line. Nope. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, well, you know we we had some uh, some trouble with this movie, but. Uh, mm. You know what? Some other people loved this movie. Uh, oh, and I will yeah. say this is... Uh, <laughs> uh, this, 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 is, this review is, is pretty, pretty in line with a lot of the other mm. ones we look at here, right? Mm. Um, yeah. I'm already envisioning what this person... I think about. you have a general idea of where this is going. Yeah. Uh, this comes to us from... Uh, I assume this is a woman, so... Uh, Lady Lara Phoenix is the uh, username here from IMDb. And mm -hmm. I think this title will indicate the tone. Let's have some fun, people. If you want a Sundance quality movie, don't go see something made by the WWE. If you want to honestly enjoy your movie-going experience and not have to worry about being confused by the movie, which many of the top movie in this winning of the top movies this weekend cannot promise or disgusted by it then this is an excellent choice good old action movie basic plot but not much time wasted on it patriotic and above all fun come on i'm a girl why don't I see more guys defending this? Try to open your minds. Relaxation is not supposed to hurt. Fun doesn't hurt. Therefore, fun movies are more proper to relaxation. Help us turn the tide on increasingly gross and nonsensical movies and bring fun back to Hollywood. Support the Marine and have fun doing so. 10 out of 10 stars. Be confuse me. I, me don't get it. Well, here's the thing I hate about these. Because I'm also like somebody who, uh, you know, one of my big things is always this. I hate the, the separation between low and high art. Right. But this idea that it's either Sundance sensitive drama or the stupidest fucking thing you've ever seen. is like, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 you, no, hold you, on. You can make action movies that have real stories and emotions <laughs> and cool action. They That's always, a false dichotomy. They're always doing this. Like, well, if you want an Oscar cast, like, I don't, I didn't say that. I just want some semblance of character and plot. And like, you know, yes. Like, I, like, I, just want, like, I just want the screenwriter to give any amount of shits about the script that he, that they are writing. Yeah. But that's always the thing they go to. It's like, oh, if you want, you know, prestige awards content, what are you doing watching an action movie? And I'm going like, well, like, well you're, a, you're making an assumption that action movies can't be highly regarded. That's the thing I always think is like, you actually are the one downplaying this genre. It's the yeah. same thing with horror movies, too. People go like, oh, what do you want? Don't watch a horror movie. It's like, I, horror is maybe my favorite genre when done well. Yeah, you know, and so yeah, it's sort of a exactly. thing where I'm going like, I, I, I don't know what to tell. You. I hate that where it's like people do that with comic books too, where they go, "Oh, comic books are supposed to be dumb." And you're like, no, 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 they're not. No, that's no, they're not. Yeah, it's just I just yeah. ugh, drives me insane. Drives yeah. me insane. People like that. Also, the patriotic comment makes a, a certain point about that who makes, this woman uh, might be. Yeah, I think I know which color her hat is. <laughs> Uh, unlike those confusing, disgusting Hollywood movies. Yeah. Ugh. Secundus. Um, <laughs> secundus. Secundus. When I said disgusting, that's why it came out of Secundus. Disgusting. Yeah. Uh, we don't have, I don't think Jesse actually made any movies with the WWE, despite being a WWE guy. Because I think he actually, because of his friendship with Arnold, just segued out just, of these. Yeah, he's just like, get me out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take supporting roles and quality stuff. I um, don't care. Yeah. Um, well, 
I wish Bruce Winning could have seen this movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because he, he would, would love this fucking movie. love this movie. But yeah. here's uh, so uh, as we always check in with Bruce at the end of these shows, uh, th- th- we're gonna open up a new a new realm. Uh, for Bruce hmm. winning here. This is not a movie review that I have from him this week. Interesting. Being that this is our first movie of the year, and uh, starting out the year means putting up a new calendar, right? <laughs> well, I, I think you. I, I know you've been wondering, and I'm sure listeners have too. What wall calendar would a Bruce winning choose? Oh no, John! This <laughs> is actually opening up like. This is peeling back the layers. This is right? this is a new this is a new year and a new wrinkle of winning. So yes. it's time once again. The wrinkle of winning. For, for everyone's favorite segment. The winning opinion. Okay, this is this is, this is this is Bruce Winning's review of the Magic Eye Wall Calendar. Okay. And it's titled Staring into My Wall for Eight Years. <laughs> this is my eighth year to stare into my wall. I get a stereogram on my Facebook news feed every day. Next year, I will get another stereogram calendar with the Magic Eye endorsement. Five out of five stars. He loves a Magic Eye puzzle, Lisman. I I am looking. I want to see. Okay. You know okay, what he's talking looking, about. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Uh, he's okay. Been, and he's been getting these for the last eight years. And he's going to get another so, one next year. So so it's like a, some sort of optical illusion. It's, so so he likes It's okay, one of those I'm, I'm things trying. where it's 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 a sort of like uh nonsensical image and but if you unfocus your eyes an image appears. Okay. So it's ma- it, he, there's maybe a, a element of magic to it, you know what I mean? Well, and we've like, talked about he does love magic. Remember his review yeah. of the prestige? That's true. Yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah, this so is I really, I oh yeah, you it's know all what? coming together. Everything Bruce, Bruce has said kind of makes sense that he's a magic guy, and I will say we can kind of smell our own. I I also like an illusion. Me uh, too. Yeah, I I'm a big I'm a big fan. It's become one of my, uh, one of my quarantine hobbies has been learning sleight of hand tricks. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I don't. No, there's no social events for me to do them at but yeah no, I, I have been but learning it's just it's card just tricks something and stuff it's something to do and i do find them very cool um yeah so yeah and also being a performer you never know when that yeah i of, i mean i it's have, like i can do that it's i like, have oh, a couple great. of you can give me if somebody can hand me a deck of cards there's a couple things i could do at the moment i'm still very All early right. in that but yeah well uh, next time uh next time we hang out in person i am going to <laughs> ask you to do some tricks okay sure or uh, uh, or tricks illusion. the proper term a trick mm. michael a trick is something a whore does for money uh <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite <laughs> Joe Bluth lines. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. There's Bruce's review. All right. Well, now we didn't we didn't care so much for this. No. But do you think we can come up with a better plot for me? Ma- what do yes. we think? Now they made more Marine movies, but they didn't make another John Triton movie. So right. let's say we bring yeah. back John Triton. We should bring back John Triton. Bring yeah. back John Triton. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah. Hashtag bring back John Triton. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Triton. Yeah. Hey, uh, where's John Triton? Uh, hey. Ooh, should Bert be in it? Ooh, maybe. What? Uh, what do you think? Uh, John Triton hey. here. Uh, hey, hey, hey John. Doing? Wait, 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 wait. John, it's uh, me, your your father. It's your father. Yeah. Remember? You used to scream when I took you to the mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's me. It's uh, funny. Dick Triton. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Triton. <laughs> well big, that's canon now big dick triton <laughs> big dick triton they used to call yeah <laughs> okay well here's the here's the uh here's the title of uh it's it's uh it's the marine two Ooh, Fam- luck of the nation luck of the nation luck of the nation that kind of fits okay. with the patriotic yeah. sort of thing so it's mm-hmm. John Triton. I think this is. I think this is kind of the opposite of this. Where it's got to be the military realizes they fucked up and they need John Triton, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. But oh, okay. This is how you get bird in it as as Big Dick Triton. Yeah, <laughs> big guy, Big Dick Triton. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, uh, uh, Bert is either taken or he knows something and he'll only talk to John Triton, his son, who, mm. because of their dark past, 
Yes. Ooh, and and I'm gonna make I'm gonna write something better than they would, which is he's expecting his first child, so he's worrying about his own. Then you tie in he's gonna be a father. Yeah, you know I uh, tried to be the best dad I could. <laughs> uh, he also mentions his brother, so maybe another maybe this is a way to get another WWE. Um, oh yeah, who should play uh, Cena's brother? Should it be Vin Diesel? <laughs> you play my brother in the Fast and Furious. I play your brother in uh, uh, the Marine. Yeah, but here's the thing: I can't lose a fight. I never lose a fight. I love the yeah. idea of Burt Reynolds somehow fathering John Cena and Vin <laughs> Diesel. <laughs> I mean, it probably shouldn't be Vin Diesel though. No, it, should, it, it should be another WWE star. It's me, your older brother, Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's right. It's right, brother. I just love the idea of him going up to Burt Rounds going, Hey, Daddy. Hey, Dad. What's going on, Papa? Yeah. Where'd I learn to fight? From fighting. From, from a, you're, you remember going up to the mountain and yeah. fighting? That's right. Yeah, nobody could hear our screams. Yeah, we need, this This is a case so bad, they need all three Tritons. They need, they need the Triton Triumvirate. Yeah, the Triton Triumvirate. <laughs> what do you say, boys? Time to kick some ass. <laughs> so who's the villain? Of That's it? what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, is it an older guy who's a villain from Bert's past? I think so. I think so. I mean, I always now wanna, Now I it's always... called Luck of the Nation. Yeah. So is it an ex-IRA? Oh, uh, now we're talking. Now we're talking. These action movies love IRA guys. Ooh. Yeah. It's Eric Roberts doing a very poor accent. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, Beautiful. John Triton. <laughs> oh. Oh, I see they I see they've been forced to send three Tritons after me. That's exactly what I was anticipating. Ooh, and he goes, You won't be getting me lucky charms, but he means the bombs he's hidden all over the country. Exactly. My lucky charms. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants gold. He's asking for a yeah. billion dollars in gold. Exactly. And there is a tie in uh to the Leprechaun franchise. Yes. I think. That's at the end of the movie. They're like, oh, shit, he's got a le leprechaun with him. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Roberts' chest opens up, and a leprechaun is piloting Ooh, a robot. Did, ooh, Eric Roberts' the, There is a... Who plays the leprechaun? Is that Warwick Davis? Yes. Uh, yeah. Originally, yes. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, eventually, he was like, you know what? I've done enough. <laughs> well, in the, in, in the WWE Leprechaun movie, it's, I think, a wrestler playing the Leprechaun. Oh, I think there might be. I think, you're, I think there is like a little person wrestler, right? Okay. Ma maybe. I don't know, actually. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming. I really don't know. The, I can't believe there's enough of the Leprechaun franchise to... Uh, yeah, it's, it's like Leprechaun for... Origins or something. Leprechaun yeah. Origins. Yeah, you're right here. WWE Studios and... It's Dylan Hornswog. Yeah, yeah, he is, he's a yeah. little person wrestler. Uh, well, there you go. Yeah, and apparently in the <laughs> in the <laughs> canon of because you know there's the whole world that the the story right the he, Leprechaun cinematic universe. Oh yeah. no no no! In I'm sorry. In the um oh uh uh in the uh WWE continuity. Oh uh, okay. He is the bastard son of Vince McMahon. Oh, well, there Apparently you Apparently that guy. So I don't know. Anyway, yeah, he shows up, too. <laughs> yeah, why, why not? not? Hey, uh, where'd this leprechaun come from? <laughs> I got to tell you. this movie get so fucking weird? I didn't, uh, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, I don't understand what's going on. This is, uh, script didn't have a leprechaun in it when I read it. All right, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are on your own. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta go. I'll, yeah. I'll be right back. I gotta go, I got to make another one of these Dungeon Siege movies. Uh, <laughs> lest we forget, of course, Bert in Dungeon Siege. Very Oh, who very, could forget? <laughs> where they've just, like, placed him on a horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess, uh, guess I'm the king or whatever. Yeah. Something. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And he, right, uh, right. Is he Jason Statham's father or something? I like think that? so. Yeah, I that makes so. a lot. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, next week on the show, we continue with uh, <laughs> with our uh, WWE uh, films by watching Walking Tall with The Rock. Yeah. Hell yeah! It's The Rock and a big piece of wood. <laughs>
Literally, the, his weapon of choice is a two by four in this movie. So. Oh, I thought Bronzy was making. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, I'm gonna ask you if you want to hear the tagline, and I will once again warn you: it's lame. Oh, okay. Well, at least there is a tagline. Yeah, this time the Marine didn't have one. This one's got a tagline. Yeah. All right, here it is. Uh, let's, yeah, let's do it. One man will stand up for what's right. That's it. <laughs> snooze inspired by a true story i doubt that uh, kind of is the answer <laughs> vaguely inspired it is oh it is extremely vaguely inspired because this is actually a remake of a movie from the 70s that is actually what happened in that story uh okay gotcha yeah kind of like cocaine bear it was loosely <laughs> based on. yeah you can go back and watch the, the original walking tall is good and i actually mm-hmm. i remember as uh, we both said we both remember liking this movie when it came out yes it's been a while since i've seen it but i do i will say this is the only one of these i do actually own a copy of this movie uh because i i'm a big fan of the rock so uh we'll see this is this is early rock this is early early rock early yeah this is his second or third film right yeah i think he's i think he's done uh i think he's done mummy returns and scorpion king at this point i think that might be gotcha um so yeah uh and it it clocks in at a brisk 86 minutes love it love to hear it man that means there's like 79 minutes of plot (laughs) i mean what more do you need the rock hits people with a big piece of wood uh all right so that'll be next week on the show oh and uh for those who want to watch it with us it is on netflix oh great so there you go it is out there uh, but that's going to do it for this first episode of the Acting Show for 2023. I'm John Campbell. Yeah. I'm Michael Lisman. Till next week, get yourself some action. The Action Show. The Action Show.